to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we can, have any... can I have a motion to open the meeting, please? So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, this meeting is being uh, recorded, if, and it is live tonight, so um, everybody please act appropriately during the meeting. I appreciate it. All right. Um, first item of agenda is uh, my comments. I don't have any specific comments tonight except for um, the rules that we had about uh, anybody um, who wants to talk. They have their... Um, they have one chance to talk for the meeting, and that would be it. So anybody goes beyond that, as far as from the public, we want to continue that. Item number two is a continued public hearing to be held to petition of applicant T.W. Conroy, LLC, Conroy Development Corp., 104 Page Street, Suite 2, Stoughton, Mass., represented by High Point Engineering, Dedham Executive Center, 980 Washington Street, Suite 216, Dedham, Mass., for special permit under Section 6.1.6, and 6.1.9 off-street parking and loading requirements for reduction in parking requests. The site plan review under section 10.6.2 for, um, for the proposed development of 6,800 square feet of new building area consisting of 34 movable additional storage units. Waiver request of section 10.6.5 development impact report. Project located at 104 Page Street, assesses map 104, lot 004, in HB Highway Business Zoning District. Can the applicant please come forward? Nicole. Turn the green on. There we go. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Nicole Langley with High Point Engineering, and with me tonight is Paul McGinnis representing the owner, Conroy Development. Um, we were here. Two, about a month ago, we presented the project to you, um, which would be an expansion of the self-storage facility known as CubeSmart at 104 Page Street. Um, the applicant is proposing to install 34, they're called movable additional storage units um, in the underutilized parking lot directly across Reebok Drive from the existing facility. Um, when we were here before, we had questions regarding landscape, the condition of Reebok Drive um, and dealing with some uh, some road conditions. Uh, since we've been here, um, we had concerns. Um, excuse, one of the public members spoke about concerns about existing potholes in Reebok Drive in front of the existing facility. The applicant um, has since hired uh, ATL Construction to address those potholes and reset the existing catch basins in Reebok Drive, and those um, areas were addressed in September. Um, I've also presented pictures to you um, showing the condition of the Reebok Drive and some conditions that the applicant is willing to do, um, which he feels, based on what his proposal is, would be a fair offset. Um, we were asked to reach out to Amazon or their landlord to see if there was a way that we could come to an agreement to, uh, I believe, repave the road. Um, we have not received a response, um, so we're presenting an alternative, and uh, we'd be happy to discuss that alternative with you. So uh, the alternative would be to, as we, I just mentioned, repair the existing catch basins that we had in the road and the potholes within the front of the facility. Um, the applicant will repair the uh, damaged flashing beacon pedestrian signal that was damaged by some uh, vehicles, some Amazon truck traffic. Uh, there was also some damaged um, boulders and uh, a concrete filled baller that will be replaced the applicant's also willing to restripe um, the crosswalks and all of the stop bars, um, so it's consistent with the approved um, site plans associated with the original development of the facility. Um, we have shown some pictures. The concern with the applicant is that he's never um, received a complaint about the road before. Uh, he felt this was new to him, 
and he didn't. <laughs> when was the last time you drove down the road? I, I was there last <laughs> week. Honest to God, Nicole, really. I, know, um, I mean, you can see what in front of the facility. Those are some of the pictures that I presented to you. I have pictures here of the repairs that were made um, and some pictures of the, the ledge. Um, so I, I guess I'm just here for a discussion with you, Mr. Chairman, to try and see what you're comfortable with and what we can, what type of agreement we can come to. Who did you try to contact over at uh, Reebok? Uh, Lincoln Properties. Lincoln Properties. We, the people we have billed, the people we're dealing with at um, Reebok, is there anybody that we can put them in contact with over there? Uh, the Amazon folks? The Amazon, I'm sorry, the Amazon folks. Uh, well, during our, our pre-app, Discussion. We discussed that, and they said that is a landlord issue and not theirs. So they they kind of I can. Well, they said that, but we also told them they needed to contact the landlord right. about about dealing with that yeah. issue. I, I can I can I can give Nicole um, the uh, engineer that we dealt with. Um, so and it, I, Nicole, and I don't I and I don't know where they are. They're done, and mm -hmm. but I do know Amazon yeah. is looking to do work, right. and I know that you guys are there. I want to see somehow we can combine this to get to where we you know, where we need to be. They're, obviously, they don't they haven't come back. It was just a preliminary hearing, but I did say to them that I wouldn't like. To, I'd like to see if we can get that type of mesh. Whether we, the people were, that have contacted us previously with the Amazon or how we get that worked out, but it's not because it's not just your piece. It's not just the piece there, but it's also the piece that goes up to where they are. Understood. Um, I know that you're not respond. You know, I don't know who's responsible. Everybody exactly. says I don't. Hmm? Exactly. You know, everybody you know, says it's not. Know. Everybody says it's not us. It's the landlord. The landlord. You guys say it's not you. Somebody's going to be responsible for that road. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, the deed for the park is very onerous. It's very hard to read, and it's not very specific about what the rights are. Um, so that's kind of where some of the disconnect is. Uh, as I said, my app, my client has reached out to Lincoln Properties to try and get the ball rolling uh, to no response. So what they thought was a good alternative is to address the issues that are in front of their facility within their property and then see if that's enough to satisfy this or at least get it to move forward. Anybody else on the board have any comments? By the way, I was up there yesterday and I did notice and thank you very much for fixing the pothole. Thank you. The other concern that I had, and I talked to town engineering here, as far as pulling into the entrance, the map that I have here, mm -hmm. the entrance, my concern was that the, if a vehicle pulls in, they have to go through a security gate. So by the time they put the code in, now what was pointed out to me on the larger drawings, a vehicle can pull in almost 20 feet, so they're off the roadway. Correct. Before, and the only other concern is if a vehicle pulls in with a trailer, you know, that would be sticking out, mm -hmm. and I don't know how long it takes to access that gate. It'll be a card reader, so it'll just be a card as opposed to punching in a code. Right, so it... And it'll be limited to a box truck. If you look at the original plans we submitted before the color plan, uh, you do have those. We did limit the size of the vehicle that would be allowed to enter the facility, and trailers just they don't fit because we did turning studies. So it will be limited to a box truck maximum. Okay, but again, that was my only concern that they they would be hanging out, and as you know, coming from BJ's, you know, that's a lot yeah, of traffic. Yeah, no, I understand your concern. So, Thank you. Uh, one other question concern that I had that more and more I looked at it, the <clears throat> containers, will they be? If they're not occupied, will they be locked? That's a question for you. I hadn't given it much thought. My sense is we probably lock them anyhow. You might go on. I'm sure for our benefit as well, we'd lock them even if they weren't occupied. I'm sorry. I didn't I'm, I, I'm sure we would lock them. We hadn't thought about it much, but if they were empty, I'm sure we'd lock them just for our own security. Right. And like I said, and the other thing that you have there is like a drop gate. To going into the property it's a pivot gate yes um i would much rather see because i've seen other um you know uh, storage places where they have a, a fence so people just can't wander in there mm -hmm. and so for security reasons 
You'd almost want a gate there as opposed to, you know, a fence gate to keep people from just wandering in. There will be a four foot high aluminum fence um, surrounding three sides of the parking lot. Um, the back side adjacent to 24 will not have a fence because that's that steep slope. Um, but th there's a partial fence there today and we're proposing to continue that so it's cl enclosed on three sides. And I, I can understand that, but someone could still wander it, it's in. It's not a security fence, I agree. And like I said, it's, it's just more of a security issue than anything else. And also, those fence gates in New England are difficult with snow because they slide back and forth rather than go up and down, and they're a maintenance problem. There's no easy answer. There's no I easy know. answer. <laughs> all right. That's basically all I have. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I want to get back to the landscaping mm -hmm. on this, okay? Um, so I see the boundary on this goes, you, you, your property line goes quite a ways up onto uh, Reebok Drive. So you actually, is that that uh, triangle there, is that under your jurisdiction? I just want to make sure I know where you're speaking. Right, where Reebok and the other road this goes. This triangle here? Yes. This detention basin is for the benefit of BJ's parking lot. However, are you in, is that your, your... No, it's not our maintenance responsibility. Because it's a, it's a really horrible looking uh, it is. <laughs> area. Um, so I wasn't sure if there was some way we could address a little bit nicer landscaping on that triangle. <clears throat> um, because you've, done, you've actually done such a nice... I went up we there. We did, yeah. We've I looked done... at your whole property. Mm -hmm. um, you did a nice job around the main building and stuff. Um, you look at this, that's, that looks like, you know, horrible. Um, the other thing is, where are you going to have these uh, uh, storage units? Uh, you, you say they're movable storage units, but to me, the, what you're showing in the drawings, uh, they're pretty much stationary, correct? They will be stationary. The, the product name is movable, movable additional okay. storage the, unit or mass. And, and those are the ones that you showed in the... Correct, um, okay. in the original right. proposal. And, um, we do not intend for these to be moved out and back and forth. They're okay. going to stay in place. Now, is that going on a uh, concrete pad? Are you going to... No, right on top of the asphalt. Right on the asphalt, okay. Um, behind the... Uh, we well, have that riprap and everything. I know that there's some ledge in that area, but, but there is area where you could actually plant... Um, I, I printed this for right you. Up, right up in this area. This is what it looks like. Yes, but in this area, right up in here where it oh. goes up, abuts the fence line of the highway, of the uh, Route 24. There there's is another a, significant ledge outcrop in this there, area. There is, there is an area, I understand mm -hmm. that, but there's also another area, quite a bit of area, where you could um, actually plant um, uh, rhododendrons and uh, hollies and uh, junipers. Oh, I can't see the area he's talking about. He's, sorry. <clears throat> Behind the Here? units, yeah. So you won't see them because they'll be behind the units. Uh, yeah, but the, the so maintenance that, the may be that an I issue. Gets, that bothers me is that um, is when you're running down highways. The, 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 you know, when, when you think of new highways put in, you go down these new highways and they they look beautiful. They they're all green with uh, with natural stuff, and then the buildings start coming in, and all of a sudden now you're driving down highways that are nothing but signs and, you know, uh, neon lights, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I, so in this case, I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't, be, uh, it, it wouldn't be a great uh, hindrance on anybody if you would just uh, dress that up with uh, rhododendrons and, you know, naturalize that embankment. As much as you, I understand where there's a ledge, you can't plant, but right. it would look so much nicer that way. And I, then the further end, um, heading up that, the, uh, towards uh, Costco there, that edge up in there uh, uh, would look nicer if you could dress that up a little bit more, too. Where are we, just, I'm trying to figure out myself, where are we going to see this from? The highway. From the highway. The highway. So, so I provided some renderings. So there's one on the screen right now um, that kind of shows you what you're going to see from 24. Right. And that's um, all, it's all, I, I drove to, I did the so, whole loop. So, you know, this is right. significantly treed yeah. and it, it's very dense. It, you're not going to see it, and it's going to be behind these units, so it's going to have shade. Right. It's not going to get a lot of sun, it's, and it's, it's going to be a maintenance yeah, issue. Yeah, rhododendrons and, and, and uh, um, hollies and stuff, uh, understory plants. That's, what, that's where they like to mm -hmm. grow. Um, 
I drove down. I, I did the whole loop. I went mm -hmm. down 24 and looked. It's all deciduous material looking into that area. So Correct. in the winter time, which is a extended time, we don't have leaves in growth. It's going to be visible. Um, the you know, elevation my, my is also pretty different. Yeah. Well, my ambition in Stoughton is to like kind of clean up some of this, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that goes on. You know, granted, we have to have industry and and, and all kinds of uh, buildings going and everything. And you know, anything that you can do to soften the effect of you know metal and it, it is what my goal is. You know, to push on this. I thing, understand. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did look at the whole thing, and I, it is doable. Um, you know, that's about it. Richard? Well, no, I'm off. Sorry. Anybody? Nobody else? Okay. Any members of the public here that want any comment? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Zamani. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Mark Zemanian, 5 Low Avenue, Chairman of the Redevelopment Authority. I uh, just want to point a clarification on that road. A um, couple of years back, uh, we had a number of attempts by the Town and Code Enforcement Officer and the Building Inspector's Office about that road. The uh, Redevelopment Authority has made numerous calls to Conroy. My contact there is Mr. Fernandez, and we've never received a response from it. Uh, that's how the town got involved, because I says, I'm at my wit's end. I, I can't get an answer. Um, <laughs> we do have a site assignment and a base lease with Conroy, and both of those things we've had lawyers recently look at, and they both seem to say the same thing, that Conroy is responsible for the property as a whole. Um, that was why they got the deal they got some very many years ago. So I wanted to bring those up as uh, points of clarification because we have made many attempts to contact Conroy and gotten no response. Richard Fernandez, Fernandez did respond at one point uh, once on numerous attempts uh, to communicate with him. And at that point, I got the same story. Well, nobody knows whose responsibility it is. Um, our lawyers seem to feel that it's Conroy, that road is Conroy's responsibility. And I understand Amazon has created a great deal of damage to that road, so I am sympathetic to that. But that road is used by members of the public on a regular basis to access BJ's and some of the other storefronts. And I think we've seen a decline in storefronts of that in that area as a result of, of poor conditions on those roads. So thank you for hearing me. I, I do hope the planning board still considers to the situation of ensuring that road becomes a safe way again for us. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Sure. Um, just for the record, Mr. Fernandez is not an employee of Conroy Development. He is, works over at the C&D facility. Um, Conroy Development is located at 104 Page Street, Suite 2. And, and we've called Con Conroy Development. But not Mark, Richard Mark, Fernandez Mark, is Mark, not the person. Getting sent to Richard Mark, Fernandez. So thank I'm just you. Okay. You know thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. I think that this was this was brought up from the, from the beginning. You guys know it's not this is nothing new. So there's a couple of things I think we could vote on tonight, but I don't think we just just hold off on the package. I think really you guys got to figure out how to resolve this. We are not the attorneys, but it is roads the town uses. I understand they're private roads, but they're not. They're, not pub they're public ways in the fact that the town, our town uses them on a constant basis, and I think somehow they need to be maintained. The town of Stoughton is required to maintain its roads. Conway Development, Stoughton Redevelopment Authority, the businesses down there, Amazon, somebody needs to fix these roads. Mm -hmm. And you're here before us now. If you guys want to wait till Amazon comes before us and we go put it on Amazon, but we're going to put it on somebody to fix the roads, and that's really what I'm going to come down to at this point. May I ask um, when and if Amazon will be before I don't know. All I know is that Amazon came before us within the past, I'm going to say within the past six weeks. I can't remember exactly the date mm -hmm. to present us with a proposal that they're looking to do. And one of the items that, we, that I had brought, put on them was the road, and it was brought up by the town engineer also, about redoing that road or doing something with that road at that point in time. So you're here first, um, unfortunately. So... I'm just telling you that somebody's got to be able to work with how that road's going to get done. And 
I do want to see this project going forward. I think it's a good project. I think that parking lot, and I think, Nicole, you know from when it was permitted, yes. I thought that that was a waste of time yes, and effort to I do remember. it. Yes. And so I think it's a good use of what you want to do, mm -hmm. but I, we need to get the road fixed. And I appreciate what you guys have done already, mm -hmm. but I, I need to get a whole, we need to get a whole picture of what's happening. What is the extent of the road? Is it just Reebok Drive? Does it go into Tech Center Drive? I'm not sure. What I'm, what I'm looking at right now, what I've seen is would be from um, Page Street all the way up into what the entrance to Am entrance and exit to Amazon is right now. So the just the access is going easement. Up. That access easement, that piece that's going up there right now is what we're mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah, we didn't discuss going down to Technology Drive. That's a whole different animal, and I think mm -hmm. it's going to get double at some point, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. Discussed that. What we talked about was that piece coming from Page Street up into the entrance and exit to Amazon. Okay. Yes, Mr. Wikuski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Reebok has, I'm mean, sorry, uh, Amazon has been elusive at best. I've had them several meetings with them. Uh, I can share some numbers with you. But this road goes back to the planning board's original development, and there's a couple people here that may remember this. Uh, in the order of conditions, there were certain things done. Uh, for instance, right now, you can take a, a left off of Page Street, go into this road we're talking about, and you can go up to almost Amazon and take a left into the parking lot. There used to be a ballard there with a, with a big gate, and that was a part of the order of conditions. It was there for fire protection only. Uh, I agree, this road's kind of wacky, uh, but there is, in the original orders or conditions, uh, quite a few things that was done. Uh, it's not owned, I don't think, uh, totally, and some people think by Conroy, because uh, last I checked, there was an ongoing lawsuit uh, between uh, BJ's and Amazon, because when Tech Drive was first put in, there was no truck traffic allowed on it. Then it was lightened up a little bit because we had restaurants put up and, and so forth. They come back for special permits to be able to have the truck traffic. Uh, so that changed a little bit as well. But I've been provided with videos of Amazon trucks coming in the opposite direction through the BJ's parking lot so that they have to make the U-turn. And I'll show you a video of a truck hung up on those boulders. Okay, so uh, Amazon does very well play that. That's the landlord thing. And uh, we still... Uh, if everybody remembers, uh, during the holiday season, how many Amazon trucks you'd see between uh, Page going up Page Street, taking a left on Maple Street, and they were using a lot down there. There had to be about 300 trailers there. And that was actually uh, in their TIF agreement. There was a, a wording in their original TIF agreement with the select board that if they were going to change to an operational transportation location, they had to come back. So we at one point were even, you know, considering, you know, thinking about it, we, were, we ne didn't end up doing about was to take action on the TIF and to pull the TIF agreement, which we found out we could do that legally. So I think what we may want to do, uh, Mr. Chair, is maybe consult with your board and, uh, and our board, maybe look at some legal counsel doing some work and to find out, I don't know, Craig, how far we can go back for the order of conditions on that. Yeah, I would hope so, and um, but and, and research it because it is a funky road, and it's like almost like a condo association. Every time somebody buys a building, they get an ownership of the road, so it it is like that, and yeah, but uh, then so there it's would, bigger. There should be common area maintenance that would deal exactly. with that. Exactly. Who's controlling the common area maintenance dollars? Exactly. That's dealing with that. So somebody's going to be controlling something. If there's money somewhere, then it needs to be dealt with. But if they're not in uh, consistent, if they're not uh, adhering to the order of conditions. And as you look at it and these people buy it, then we have some recourse because they violated the order of conditions. So, you know, that's when I think what we should do is you know, we should gather together and I'd be more than glad to sit down with our council, invite you in, and we can see what we can get the ball rolling on. And if it takes a vote of my board, I'll bring it up, you know, but um, it's, it's got to be resolved because right now I sat up there for an hour and a half one day and there's more passenger cars that are driving through it as a through route now from Page Street through Avon. They go through the parking lot and they go out Technology Drive. Amazon recognized this with the, the truck traffic on Tech Drive because at one point they had a 24-hour security guard that was turning them around at the roundabout and sending them back out to 139, which created another problem. You know, but uh, so this problem is is definitely grown with Amazon, and um, I do have several numbers. We we I have an ongoing relationship with one of the people that's an area manager there. He was responsive, but again, it's Amazon. You know, and uh, you know they really 
I understand, but they, like so, I said, they're, they're, looking, right. they're looking to make some changes up there that, you know, are supposed to be positive changes, I think, for that right. whole roadway. But for whatever reason, they didn't understand that roadway connects to everything else. Right. So I, yep. what I'm trying to do right now is just to, there's a continuity with what they need to do, what Conroy needs to do. I'm trying to just make that all happen. Right, and I think we could do something with that as well. I just wouldn't want to see one petitioner, you know, be held holding the basket for everybody else that right. under the order of conditions, you know, they have skin of the game. So if we're going to do this, I agree. I would say that we need to, as the town, as a whole, act on this, straighten it out, find out who's responsible, and hold the, you know, the individual people accountable. And if it's landlords, if it's Lincoln development, and it's Conroy, everybody's going to have to do their share. But I think it's time that we, we do just that. So, so we I can mean, the only up. way you're doing this from us, from our standpoint right now is to hold this up until we can get that done. Right. Well, that's really that, that could be unfair because I, it's, it's taken this long to get this far. You know, but I, you, I it's, your, it's your board. You have to be the chair. My, so. my, I can put this to vote right yeah. now if the applicant would like me yeah. to do that. I'm just not sure if the special permit has to be four, has to, be four to one vote. Yeah. No, I was just wanted to make that point so that your board was aware of that, and I think that we should collaborate and, and see what we can do to get this thing moving forward. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yes. One of the questions I have yes. as this discussion continues, who owns the land, owns the land that um, Amazon is on? Is it, do they lease that from Conroy? No. They lease it from Lincoln Properties. What's that? Lincoln Properties they lease it from. They own they Lincoln Properties. It's not owned property. by Conroy. It's property. owned by Lincoln okay. Properties. The other thing that I noticed that uh, BJ's when they put in the gas pumps, yes, they they sell diesel fuel. Amazon when those trucks come in there, they need diesel fuel, and I've seen many many of their trucks come in without trailers, fueling up at BJ's because it's it's there, it's convenient. So I I think that's. Again, another toll on this roadway. That's why those foliage that were done at the uh, the Y shape there got wiped out because trucks were making that turn to go into to I, get fuel. I so, agree with you, but again, that's not a Conroy property. I get that, but if I if I could comment too, sure, I um, appreciate. It. I'm 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 actually very grateful your help in trying to straighten this out because we've been trying to get this done for quite some time. Our project is basically fairly minor in nature. Um, I, I, I agree. And, but and, and we'd be happy to work with Amazon. We, we probably have $10,000 worth of damage to our property every year from Amazon that never gets reimbursed. So we'd be happy to have that dialogue with your assistance. But I'm wondering if we can approve our, our plan contingent on us meeting with Amazon and coming up with a plan that works for the town. I'm not going to speak for the whole board. I'm just the chairman of the board. I can allow the board if they want to make that type of a motion. There is three different um, votes we'd have to take on that tonight with the way that the, um, the, with the way you're doing it. I could have that put out to the motion to the board. I caution you that there is, there has to be four to one votes on, on one, at least one, if not two of the, um, the items. Um, I, I my think concern, it, my concern is what I would like to see, and you guys know it, is to wait one more meeting to see if we can get something to, with Amazon, with the Board of Selectmen, with somebody else to try to get some sort of consensus as to what's going to happen going forward. Because once we release this, then all of a sudden everybody walks away and says, well, we're, ha we're, we're good, we've patched the roads and we're moving on, and a year from now we're back in the same boat and nothing has happened. You know, and that's my concern. No, I, I understand your concern, but I, I think, you know, if it is an issue where there's the original order conditions from 1984, which I have a copy if you need, um, and there is something out there somewhere that does say what the rights are and who is who, you can come after Conroy at any time. I think just because but they, they have an application but, uh, why, before right, but you now. Oh, I understand that, but the, the process to do that obviously hasn't worked since 1984. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a point where we can, Conroy needs to come to, you know, they, they're asking the town now for something. If Conroy right. doesn't need us, Conroy's going to say, okay, well, come after me. Right now, you guys need something. I see what you're saying. I want something, the town wants something. But because this project is so small, 
I, I, I don't think it's going to be something that Conroy is going to put all their eggs in one basket for. It may not happen, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. But they are willing to work with you. Like I said, Mr. McGinnis saw an Amazon truck today do some more damage, mm -hmm. and he followed him and spoke to him, and it was not my problem, you know. And so they want to get this resolved. I guarantee they do. I, I, I agree, but right, from my point of view, the only way I, I can see to make it happen is we need to, this, this is the only stop gap I have. I realize it's a small project, but it's really the only stop gap until Amazon or somebody else comes to the plate and say, we're going to fix these roads. I get no way of holding anybody responsible. And the plan, we as the planning board, I don't know what the 1984 decision, I, I'm going to have to go back now and review it myself to figure out what that was. It's been brought up by two people and the engineer. So the onus back on us now is this board to review that and figure out where you are. And if you're in noncompliance now, then why would we give you another permit to go forward? You see what I'm saying? I, I do, I, it, yes. You see what I'm saying? If, to try, if Conroy is in noncompliance to what the original decision was, there's no way we could, have, we could approve something else to go forward now. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm um, assuming you can ask for a continuance, you can ask for a vote. Continuance? Yeah. We're asking for a continuance, please, to the next. I have a motion to ask oh, request Mr. Continuance. Mr. Chairman, you need to continue it to a date certain. Um, you have the meeting of the 26th, and you have the meeting of November 9th. I would say the November 9th meeting. That would give us some time to maybe get something done. A motion to continue to the second November 9th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. <sighs> Item number three in the agenda, agenda. Continued public hearing will be held at the petition of the applicant Milton Real Properties of Mass LLC, 100 Quarry Drive, Milford, Mass, 01757, presented by Bowden Construction, 220 Reservoir Street, Needham, Mass, for a special permit under Section 6.2.4, signs permitted in the I District to increase the pylon site into 100 feet tall. Minor site plan review under Section 10.6.2 to modify the approved site plan. The proposed modification to install Cape Cod berm and precast curbing instead of the approved granite curbing. This project is located at 207 Page Street, assesses map 94, lot 43, in the I Industrial Zoning District. Could the applicant and or his representatives please come up and introduce themselves? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Bear with us for one second so we can get adjusted. And I'll introduce the folks that are here with me tonight on this matter. Um, so, for the record, great, thank you. This, should that be on? Should we turn green. that on? Put, put green. It's got to be on green. There you go. Um, for the record, Attorney Barry R. Crimmins of 909 Washington Street in Stoughton, here on, on behalf of uh, Milton Properties, uh, the applicant doing business as Milton Cat uh, for the uh, property at 207 Page Street in Stoughton. Uh, if you folks haven't been up there recently, uh, we welcome you to take a ride by. The building is, is well under construction. Uh, the steel is up, hoping to have it uh, winterized so that we can begin work inside with the hopes for a, uh, uh, do I dare say, the end of July 2024 uh, opening next year uh, for what uh, we all feel, and I think the town agrees, will, will be a, a welcome addition to the town. Uh, particularly in this area of North Stoughton, uh, in this industrial zoned area, uh, where, where folks for many years have pointed to uh, as an area for increased commercial and industrial growth. And, and this project is certainly in keeping with that. Brief history, uh, this board, after the zoning board had approved the, the special permit for the use, this board granted site plan approval in February of 2021. Thereafter, Milton Cat purchased, as, as you face the property, the residence immediately to the left of the property, which had created a little cutout. And by acquiring that property, we were able to square off the property. 
That led to us coming back before you in February, almost to the day, a year to the day, February of 2022, uh, for a modification of, of the original site plan approval. Um, as part of the original and the modified site plan approval, obviously certain conditions, uh, one of which we're asking for a, a modification of uh, relative to the on-site curbing material to, to be used. Uh, you will recall that we were before you on September 14th. Uh, we discussed that matter, and that matter was continued to tonight. That matter uh, being a minor modification to the site plan approval, uh, is a matter that requires a majority approval from, from this board, so three out of the five members would need to approve that request. The other matter before you um, is an application uh, for a special permit uh, under the sign regulations. Uh, the uh, zoning bylaw, when it was amended in 2018, switched uh, waivers of the sign regulations from what used to be a variance application to the Zoning Board of Appeals to a special permit application to this board. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, and, and, and I've, I've been remiss for not already introducing the folks here, so if I may do that uh, ver very quickly. Seated to my left is Mr. Brad Farron, who is the facilities manager for Milton Cat, uh, has been involved in this project from day one. I think it just occurred to me that uh, the meeting last September, I believe, was the first meeting we had had live <coughs> before this or any other board. This project originally started uh, back in 2020 during the height of COVID. And so uh, if, uh, those of you who are uh, on the plane board at the time will recall those were all Zoom meetings, uh, uh, which created its own challenges. Uh, seated next to Brad uh, is Mr. Gabe Ginnam. Uh, he is a sign contractor uh, with Magnus Sign International. Magnus Sign does all of the Caterpillar uh, signage. So Gabe is here uh, to lend his expertise and answer any potential questions that the members may have relative to the request to increase the height of the sign. And uh, he and Brad both can explain uh, why that request has become necessary since the original uh, sign was approved during, during the course of the original site plan approval. And also with us tonight is Sean McGinnis. Uh, Sean is with Bowdoin Construction, who is our general contractor uh, for the property. Uh, and uh, Sean had submitted previously as part of our application um, uh, pictures showing uh, the view of the site along Route 24, uh, which underscores the need for the additional height uh, of the sign. Uh, what I'd like to suggest, Mr. Chairman, if I may, is we have obviously two applications before you, uh, separate applications, separate quantum of vote needed to approve those applications. Uh, but I think it would make sense, uh, with your indulgence, we can talk about both matters, uh, and then obviously I think the board would have to take separate votes on, on both. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Brad, and, and, and he can talk a little bit about uh, why it is that we're here tonight. Thank you, Barry. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, for the new members I haven't met before, uh, Nice, nice to meet you. Um, we are. It has been a process. It's been a. It's been a long journey, but we we are we are making great progress. Uh, I'd like to talk first about the the sign piece, and I know, Mr. Chairman, you came out on the site, and I I'll just tell a little bit of the history so people are familiar. When we came in front of the board for the original application and and permit piece, we didn't own the property. We were under a purchase and sale agreement to buy it. And we had some existing topography, but we didn't have the site cleared. We didn't have all of the contours. Um, and we knew about the gas easement that goes through. And we originally asked, it was for a 66-foot sign, if you take the height of the, the head of the sign as well. It was placed upon the berm, the top of the berm. Once we got there, after we purchased the property, we had the special permit which was tied to doing the road improvements between the two curbs uh, out on Page Street. I heard you just spend a lot of time talking about conditions of roads in, um, in Stoughton. 
Um, we found out that because of the easement and the setback, and I've at Milton Cat, and reason one of the reasons we have uh, Gabe here tonight is in the six states that we operate, this is the first sign that we've put in of this magnitude. And so when we started doing the design of the foundations and we had to get set back from the top of the berm, we're actually in a hole um, at, the, at the base of the, of the uh, property, which now if we put the 66-foot sign in, you're not going to see it. It's basically non-existent. You can't see it from 24 and where we want to be. Um, so basically, this, this, the package that we have presented to you um, in our opinion, gets us to where what the original intent of the special permit was. That's, uh, in a nutshell, th that's where we're at. It's not that we're adding to what um, we thought the original view was. It's the conditions that we found encountered. And um, Mr. Chair, as you saw, my the deep hole and the expensive hole we put down at the bottom of the of the uh, site to get that foundation in. And so that's why we're here with that, with that particular piece. And before we talk about the other things, I'd like to see if you have any comments or... If I could, if I, if I may, Mr. Jim, just to add to that, to, to what Brad was saying, and you can see in, in the pictures on the screen, and, and, and I believe you should all have uh, the hard copies that were submitted as part of our application. The sign at the height proposed uh, will just be visible over the tree line along Route 24. Without the waiver to increase the height, the sign will simply not be visible and would therefore uh, not only be impractical, uh, but frankly would be useless for an identification <laughs> sign. So because, as Brad said, you know, we can, if, if necessary, we can talk about the topography and et cetera, but this sign is simply necessary to make it visible over that tree line. The, the original sign, but in its original location, it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been able to be viewed over the tree line anyway? Is that no. what you're saying? Uh, I and mean, that's what that photo is that, now that's showing. That's what showing. It right. Would, right. It that, that, so what you. we're saying is that the sign's height was never, would never have worked. It, it wouldn't have worked there. Right. right out of the gate, if I may, uh, right out of the gate, it, it, was, um, <laughs> it, was in a, it would never would have cleared the tree line at, at, at any point. Um, if it was located at the top of the berm based on the 60-foot well, height. Whether it was at the top of the berm or the bottom of the berm, it didn't it, yeah, it it did was work. Never, it did work. So it, the sign needed an additional, what, 20 feet to get to where it was? Well, or? It, we, we actually needed an extra. What happened now is because of the easement of the high-pressure gas easement on top of the berm, the foundation was engineered a certain size, and it was far too close to the easement, so the foundation had to be moved down the berm. And if you measure the sign from the top of the berm, uh, we end up at around probably 85 feet or so. You're 20 feet, you're 20 yeah. more feet. Yeah, basically whatever. 20 more feet or so to clear, a little more than 20 more feet. But it, since we have to locate the base of the sign down the berm, and if you measure it, if you start the measurement from there. You get another 20 feet. There it is. There's, your, there's the request for a 100-foot sign, and only for the top of the head to be. And I might add that um, in that position that at no time is the pole ever going to be seen. That's the thing, it's just the sign head. That's the only thing that will ever be seen. You're asking me, I'd only want the pole to show. I wouldn't want the sign to show. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. Pole, 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 pole's not a, yeah, it's, 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 it's not great for advertising. The pole doesn't do much for advertising. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, no, it's just I've, I've been through some of these uh, hearings before, and sometimes people have an issue with the visibility of the pole and, and how it looks from the curb at different times of year. So. Um, it, can, I, can we go back to where the tree was, the tree height? Bill, no. can you just go back to where I was showing the tree height? Uh, 20, 20, 24? The, that's yeah. Right, right yeah, there, there it is. Right there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I should let you know that they're also, when they raised it and moved it back, they're increasing the size of the sign. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did not realize that until we got further in the drawings. Mm -hmm. It's a 10 by 40, 40 10 by versus 40. a 6 by 24. 24. 24. Yeah. So there's a, there's a sign increase, too, that's part of why the special we, why permit. Why are we increasing the size of the sign? Because the reason for the increase in the size of the sign is these signs are engineered for a certain viewing distance based on a certain height. At 60 feet high, with no visible distractions, a 6 by 24 would have worked ideally. But since we are going up in height, 
we have to proportionately increase the sign in order to, to maintain the same level of visibility of the brand. And so a 6 by 24 at 85 or 100 feet would look like a small postage stamp on a big envelope. It would, it would be ineffective as well. It needs to proportionally get a little larger as it gets a little taller. Mr. Chair, just and this isn't the board's issue. This is ours. We, as the Caterpillar franchise, not the publicly traded company, the manufacturer, we are held to their standards, their branding standards. That the dimensional piece and what Gabe's talking about is dictated by Caterpillar to us as the dealer, and that's, like I said, that's a, that's our issue. But that's that's the restraints that we operate under. So how many square feet are we going up to? 400. So the, the current one now as proposed at 100 feet is, uh, is 400 square feet. Do we already have um, variances on the signs in the building too? Does the, the signage, when we approve the site? I don't think so. No. We approved it, we didn't have any variances on the signs? Not in the building, I don't think so. <clears throat> these, units, um, these units are manufactured. Just then at um, the in, in basically one foot increments uh, and four to one ratio, so 10 by 49 by 36, et cetera. And at this height, this is the optimal size that works for this type of height and this viewing distance at this speed of traffic. Um, and we compared it to the BJ sign that is across the street in size and the target sign that is roughly 100 feet and pretty well the next property over, they're larger. That target display is much is considerably larger than what we're asking for here. Um, and again, when you it, it seems like a large <coughs> sign, but when you put it against the landscape of all of that row of trees, it really is very, you know, it, it doesn't jump out very much at all. You'd really have to turn your head to notice it. Okay. Any more questions on the board? Yes. Yes, sir. Based on your last statement, yes, sir. You turn your head to notice it. Yes. Since you're traveling at 65 miles an hour, why put a sign up? Well, why put a sign up for any dealership? So the sign represents not just the Caterpillar brand; it represents all the sub businesses. It's not just Caterpillar that they're representing there. It represents all the other business elements that they have operating out of that facility as well, other business units. Um, but the Caterpillar sign is what attracts traffic. When, when trucks and heavy equipment come down, come towards a Caterpillar dealer, that, that's usually the first beacon they look for. And we've done about 2,100 of these across the country. There's about 2,100 locations. We've done them for about 24 years. Every single dealer relies on this as their primary attractor to bring in their traffic and their customers to their location. For the same reason that Target does it, for the same reason that BJ's does it. It is important to identify GPS. where the location is. GPS. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's kind of the new way. It's a good sales, but a GPS brings everybody to me. GPS will get you to the site. I mean, to my thinking, yeah, but uh, that sign, the location, you don't even got to know which exit to take. Well, you can take either one, actually. I realize you yeah. can, but without GPS, you're not going to find it. Right. Right. Yes. You got a comment? If they, oh. take, if they take the 139 exit to be coming down... Uh, technology drive through Reeboks. Yes, but <laughs> um, that's another discussion. Uh, and to the board, you know, I mean, I, just in this thing, right? We had a sign approved, and and we're looking, you know, to make that usable. And is, I me mean, and I understand. So we really were at a modification to what we've already approved. Yes, we um, we approved it on a special permit, and it was a. Uh, um, those provisions part of that special permit for you guys to be able to, you know, repair the road in order to get the per in order to be able to get the sign. So the sign needs to be usable and workable. So we understand that. And I think um, I'm not trying. We can't. We're not going to reverse on the special permit. It's a matter of whether we're going to give you the modification to to get to that height. And that's that's really what the discussion is. It's, the sign's there. We've approved the sign. It's a matter of where we're going from there. Yes. Okay. With my questions, the. Uh as far as this sign, is this going to be a illuminated sign? It it is internally illuminated, sir. Yes. Okay, so it, it will be. It will be illuminated, correct? Illuminated. Internally, yeah. Okay, and then the uh, the other question is um, access to the sign for if you have to do repairs. 
Excellent question. That's, that's one of the big issues. So we, so the, the, technically speaking, the, it's never the LEDs inside the sign that go. They usually have about a 100,000 hour life on them. And the plastic 10, 12 off. years, yeah, I'm, nobody's worried about that. Uh, so what we've, and the way we've engineered this sign is we're running um, a 10 gauge wire for all the power supplies down to the base and there's gonna be a junction box at the base. So more than likely when things go, it's usually a power supply. So when the power supply goes, you don't even need a service truck. It can be done at ground level. There'll be a giant junction box mounted to the base of the pole near the ground, so everything will be serviced from the ground. There's no need to go up. Well, if the face of the sign, it's going to be two-faced sign. Correct. Correct. So yes, sir. if something was to happen with that. Well, that's, that's kind of a rare thing. I mean, if there's a storm that happens and a tree goes through it, we have no choice. We have to get up and, and fix it. Yes. Right, but do, do you have an access road that allows you to get up? We do. Yes. At the back, right at the back of our park. That's, that's, that's part of the park. dealership. Yes, there, there is a road right around that. That's it's how the, we're accessing really it now. At the, back of the, the back of the site. I mean, they could access with a crane easily. All right. Yes, sir. And, and then the trees that are in question here, are those the trees that are uh, part of the state highway? I believe so. Part yes. of, it's part of the state highway and it's part of the conservation area that's behind yeah. it. Uh, but the, 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 um, the gas easement. Uh, gas easement and the concom area behind yeah. it. Yes. All right. And the only other concern that I had that was brought up at the last meeting was, and this goes into your other application, is about the curbing. You're going to get to that. Yeah. Right. But what happens is, all right, I'll save that question for yeah, that. That does yeah. Yeah, Let's try to limit this to where we are. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. But I want to make my decision. No, uh, different votes. Mr. Chairman, I have. It, you know, it was brought up whether it's a, the sign size is a variance. No, it's not, because the way they've rewritten this is it's um, 6.2 is the sign bylaw, and then 6.24 is signs in the industrial district, which talk about the size, height, and those sorts of things. And then, and then it, later on it says that um, uh, special permit, uh, the provisions of section 6.2, which is the entire sign, uh, may be waived by granting for the special permit. One of the things uh, in looking at this, I did note, uh, I'm fairly certain that BJ's is in the highway business district, um, which is just on the other side of the interstate. We allow 80 feet in the highway business district for a pole sign. So I just thought you should, you know. 80 feet. Uh, uh, yes. It says it shall be erected no portion uh, if above 80 feet above the ground. So it allows, it allows, it talks about an 80 foot height and highway business, which is literally right across the street, obviously. On the other side. On the other side of 24. Um, so, if you're if you're looking at comparable, you know, it's rather ironic that one side one side's 80 feet and the other side is the industrial district's 30 feet. Could so, I ask a question too, Bill? I, Richie was next. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> sir, you uh, mentioned that the op optimal uh, square footage um, for a height of uh, this type of sign, this uh, sign is 400 square feet. Um, that size head at that height. That is correct, right. sir. And um, the other gentleman mentioned that there was criteria from the uh, from the manufacturer that dictated the sign design. Is there room in in the criteria from the manufacturer to decrease the the s square footage of the sign at 100 feet and still be uh, visible? So. This is, it's an interesting thing, and going back to what this gentleman here said, uh, across the street it's 80 feet. So if this sign was allowed to get as close to the highway as the BJ sign, we can do 80 feet. 80 feet would be beautiful, and we could reduce the size of the sign, the size down one size to maybe a 9 by 36. But what's happened is because of the gas easement, we forced our sign farther inward towards the property, and this, the center point of the pole is, is down on a berm, so hence the extra height in order to make it at par to match what the BJ sign is. So we're not only larger because we're 
going having to go taller, we're also larger because we're having to go farther in towards the property. Okay, so yep. can we go down a size? Probably. The next size down is nine by thirty-six, which is uh, uh, what do we take about three hundred sixty square feet thereabouts? Mm -hmm. You know, it can go down a little bit. There is one the next size down. It, it would it may work, but um, I would never go below that in size. Not at that viewing distance, not at that setback, not at that height. There just comes a point where it just comes a point of diminishing returns, and it's just ineffective. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I was just going to make a comment about that 80 feet above the ground. That's Maybe we should fix something on that, because if you're on a 100-foot a hill and you go 80 feet above the ground or you're in a valley, you know, I mean, What's above, uh, where are they taking above the ground? That's something we can take a look at. Okay. That's, right. that, that's, that's the question right there, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'd just like to add um, the location of the sign. So the gas easement is 50 feet wide. Uh, if the sign is 40 feet, yes. then the center pole of the sign is going to be 70 feet off of the uh, right away. So it's, it's that well, far it's back. back. It's, from, fair, it's a fair it's 70 way back. Feet, yeah. 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 It's probably back as far as the target sign. The target sign is probably back about that far. Yes. You almost answered my question. So it's going to be back 40 feet from the property line? 70 feet. So 70 feet? 70. Okay. Never mind. I don't have a question. The Algonquin gas easement is, like Craig said, is 50 feet 50. wide. And that abuts the Route 24 layout. And so then we have to move it even that much further beyond that Algonquin gas easement. Okay. <clears throat> we did advertise this as a public meeting, so um, I will, does anybody from the public want to comment or have anything to say? Yes, Mr. Tamanian. Thanks, Brad. Good evening. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, we have Boston Interiors, Home Depot, Jordan's, Ikea there. We've, I understand we've moved the sign back, but if you look at that, the original sign that was agreed to was at 66 feet. Now we're looking to go to 100. I mean, it is a highway, so I don't know how it really affects the residential areas in Stoughton. I don't think it does. Um, however, my question would be, is this going to cause a problem for some of the other businesses that already have exposure on 24? That would be my only concern with an additional height. Any, I think the distance is... Sorry? The distance is probably far away from anything else. Probably, but it's just something to consider, that's all. Thank you. Anybody else? If you don't mind, we'd like maybe go to a vote on this now and then move on to the other one. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Can I have a vote? Aye. Paul? No. No. Aye. 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 Now, Four Mr. Chairman, do you <laughs> vote to approve it? The sign, the sign, we're, we're approving the modification to the special permit for the sign. Okay, so Why? do you wish to have a decision written? Do we need one written? If we do, we can. Yes, yes. because it's an appealable action. So, okay. so then you, we'll get, then you we'll should vote to close the hearing, vote to, to do it, to approve it subject to a, a set of conditions. Unfortunately, because I, I, I did not prepare a set of conditions for you. I didn't realize we were going to need one. I mean, I wouldn't have gone their legal far. counsel is going to want a set of conditions. <laughs> if we need to have a set of conditions, that's fine. We'll get, we'll, we'll change, just change the mod, just, yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I would just, based upon, you know, conversations we had here, one of the special conditions we had, and probably Barry's going to elbow me for saying this, but we, uh, we had that agreement to do the road improvements between the driveways. And I know that there's some development going on across. Um, if the board would be so inclined, you know, we could make a condition that we hold on, you know, whether we put money into escrow or we work with the town so that we don't double our efforts on those improvements out on Page Street 
I, I think yeah. I already asked you to do that. Uh, you did. Okay. You did. And, I, and I agreed and I to it. I, I just, if you wanted, if you know, wanted belts and I, suspenders, I, yeah. I'm, I'm only that statement is really only got to do with saving you and the other uh, developer money. It's if you guys can figure out how to get that done, we're all for it. I'm, okay. you know, it just enough. as long as it gets done, we're willing to work. We're willing to work with you to get that done. I don't think that's any any barring on where we are here. Fair so enough. I guess we need to retake the vote. Um, so we need a motion to close the public hearing. All right. So motion to close the public yeah. Go ahead. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion? So we need anything. We just basically close the public hearing. We'll have to wait for you to come up with the decision at that point. I, I just do procedurally how you want to do it. Just tell me. Uh, yes. Okay. So we've yeah. closed the public hearing. Yeah. They're going to come up with a set of conditions. Uh, you, you, you're, you voted to look at approving it, you know, subject that I need to come up with the, the findings and the conditions. The final decision that we'll vote on. And, and we'll put that on the agenda at the next meeting, and I will email it to Mr. Crimmins. But if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, though, just to be clear, and because you retook the, or going to retake the vote, I think we still need a a similar vote to approve. We will, right. Well, he has the, when he has it written up, we'll, we'll vote to approve the written document. Right. But I guess what I'm asking and requesting of the board is to retake its vote to approve the request subject to the decision to be prepared by the town planner. Right. That would be. I, my concern is, again, because of the quantum of vote, if members are not can here. Can you make that motion? Yes. A uh, motion to approve uh, pending the conditions from the uh, writing of the, from the town plan. Decision. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So, so the second part, if, if we may. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. Now you can present the second part. The second part of our, our request tonight is the request for modifications to the uh, prior site plan approval relative to the on-site uh, curbing materials. I think, Brad, are you going to speak yeah, to this? Yeah, if you don't mind, Barry. Yeah. I, first of all, I apologize um, not being here at the last meeting when this was presented. Um, and, I, and I did watch and, and listen, so I heard some of the concerns that the board had um, with this change. And I guess I'd just like to back up just a little bit and, and tell you why we're here and, and why we're asking for this and, and the conditions that apply to it is that um, we manage somewhere around you know three hundred million dollars worth of facilities in the East, and we we have a very proactive facility management plan you know i heard some of the con concerns about you know maintaining the facilities and and, and he even hearing part of your discussion and the first thing that you heard this morning the difference with us as Milton Cat, the Milton family, we own the property and own the facilities and maintain them, and that's a very important part of our business. We're, we're not leasing, we're not in and out in 10 years or 20 years or whatever. We do facility inspections. Part of the original application piece was we provided our operations plan, which talks about spill prevention and erosion control and how we maintain the facilities. I, I looked at I look at Craig over there. I can't remember 300 and some odd pages that we have to update, you know, on, on a regular basis. That that we have to do that piece of it. Um, if you look at the site, I, I heard one of the comments, and I don't know if it was really, uh, you know, pertinent to this discussion, but there was a question about snow removal. There is. I don't think it's in this on this particular one, but in the permitted set that was approved, it was C105. Hang on. Yep, you got it. There you go. There, I'm looking. And, and it, this, is, this is the history. <laughs> right? there, there was a dedicated snow storage area that this board approved as part of that application piece, so that was addressed. I heard um, one of the conversations. Oh, you know, I, I'm talking too fast. C what? C105. I swear, engineers charged by the page. <laughs> right in the lower right hand corner. Nope, you got it. Slide page left. Right here. Um, you know, that was, that was one of the questions that, that came up that the board asked about. Another one was the locations of the catch basins which I think we can go back to 104. I'm glad you know your plan set. 
There you go. So the water flows, if, where we're talking around this place, one of the things I heard about was the concern over the conservation area down over the, the, the bank, per se. Um, what, what doesn't show here, so where all those dashed or lines is, that's our undergrade storage area, right? That's where we do our storm retention and, and capture all the storm water that runs through the runs before we discharge it. Um, that, that piece, those storm drains, we capture everything on the site, and those board members that were here, remember, we even went so far with this application, there was a pipe that come off from Page Street that really wasn't ours, but we picked that up yeah. in the storm drain piece to be able to, to make sure that we protected that conservation area down below. And that water from the, what I heard was a lot of the concern was if storm water breached those, that berm or those curbs, that it would end up over into the conservation area. That water sheets down down the page. I know I'm using my hands while we're, we're sitting here talking on this. And there is along that riprap slope before that, we have a very extensive landscaping plan. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say to the board right now for you know open for questions is that we've we've taken a look at this from an engineering standpoint, including with you know the town engineer that we talked about this with. And one of the things that we heard was that even in the town of Stoughton, right, your public works, you use Cape Cod berms even within the town. And I'll be up totally honest with you. This is an upfront money piece. That's part of the discussion. So there was two, there was three questions around right. that area. One was the slope of the road, how fast the water is running down there and where it goes to as far as the first catch basin. Once it goes past that, you're getting down to the curb where the catch basin is in the far corner. As that starts, um, it's down a nine and a half percent slope down. Down, right. Here's the catch basin, the first catch basin. The DMH3A. The catch basin number four is right here. Yeah. And then where's the next one? Is that the low point? Now, that's my question. Is that the low point? Every, the site is the low point of the whole greater area here. Okay. So this is, these are the wetlands. Right. You can see these lines very tight together, very steep slope. It's all, all the water from what's the, the And what's the grade coming from the upper corner down to that point? Here. Sean. Uh, 235. So, okay. So oh. because my question is, there's, a, there's, a, there's an outfall over, there's an outfall down right there. Mm -hmm. Keep going. No, keep going yep. down to the curb. Down to here? No, nope, all the way down to the curve at the far end of the parking lot, to your right. That's another low point there, am I correct? Or is that just the outflow? I can help out. Uh, that's the outflow, yep. So it's not a low point at that point? No. Right, right. And we have, there's a catch basin here in this location. The next one is back here. Mm hmm. And this one back here is probably 10 feet okay. off the curve. This one here is directly against the curve. Okay. My, That's the low point for the, uh, the exit uh, driveway. Okay. So my concern was when I brought this up was, and, and they, it's explained to me now and I'm th thankful, but my understanding was the water was running all the way to the back corner and there was no controls of that water in the slope we had. And when I was out to the site, I looked at it, I wasn't picking up where you were with the grades at that point. And I asked what type of Cape Cod berm and there wasn't a profile presented and we, had, we were going from a six inch to a four inch. I'm saying we have a problem with that end of it. That was where the concern came, mm -hmm. okay? I'm understanding of it better now. Thank yep. you. Yep, yep. Um, and it is a six inch that we're proposing. Okay, how many linear feet curve. are we dropping off? Dro how many linear? How many linear feet are we changing from Cape Cod Berm to, um, or from Granite Curb to Cape Cod Berm? I actually don't, well, did I not calculate I that number. We can calculate it. I don't have it offhand. So it's basically this whole starting at, with, so this. No, that's still oh, stays Cape, Cape, Cape Cod, I mean, granite curve is going to run to yeah. the building, right? Yeah, so this would be the granite right here, the red line. From here up and all the way around to the green line, we're proposing the Cape Cod berm. The green area we would like to change to precast, this area right in here, pick up the um, Cape Cod berm again until you hit that red line. That red line would be the previously approved granite curb. 
1,700 feet, 2,000 feet. Anybody know the number? Jeez, oh, I'm sorry. We didn't, didn't even think to calculate no, it. No, I got it somewhere. I just don't know where. Do you know the bonding plan? Dollars. Yeah. I bet you you know how many dollars you're saving. No. <laughs> I, I, Mr. Chair, it, it is a financial. Well, I, part I agree, of it is a financial just, decision. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. The, the, the cost of inflation, the cost of materials, and this project from when we started three years ago is exponentially higher. And, and I've been tasked, that's one of the things I'm tasked with is to. Craig, what's our detriment to anything from the, town, from the town standpoint of view, from an engineering standpoint, if you're any detriment to this? Yeah, I mean, um, I listened to your concern about uh, having less of a reveal for the curb, and I actually did a little ponding calculation um, for that particular catch basin, right? So I have some old school nomographs and everything that I went to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it will, you know, pond up in the 100 year storm to a six inch depth over there, according to um, the inflow that's calculated in the 100 year storm. Um, I have a couple of, the way that you reduce the uh, ponding depth would be to change that catch basin from a single inlet to a double grate catch basin. That would reduce that ponding depth and it would bring it down to below that four inch reveal. Um, Sean just mentioned that uh, they were using a six inch Cape Cod berm. Is that true? Six inches proposed. So a six inch height? Mm -hmm. So if that's true, then uh, the concern goes away. Um, normally, with the Cape Cod berm, we it's have a six a, inch, it's a six inch from binder, and it's a four inch shown, which you would still cause two inch problem. And that's what you're proposing: is a six inch. It's still only a four inch reveal, so we still have a yes. two inch issue. Yeah, six, on six inch starting at the top of the binder. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So that we saw four it's a four inch, it's a four, four inch, inch reveal. reveal. Four mm -hmm. inch. So then I guess the proposal would be: uh, Would you be willing to go to a double catch base in that location? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Anybody on the board have any other questions? Yes. Behind that berm, now you, you said extensive landscaping. So are you going to mound the soil up, you know, uh, another six inches or twelve inches, and let it flow over? So I have the berm. Have the landscaping plan by chance. The berm. What he's just saying, Paul, is that the berm? <laughs> L one. back the berm. Is gonna have <laughs> yeah. the, but no, but he's already L1. got a six inch. Well, he'll be level with the berm, then it'll go off. But the six, he's already got a six inch, a four inch. Thing and we're going to put a two, we're going to put a double catch base in. Right, but so you have your berm, and obviously you have to landscape up to that. A lot of times, people will mound it, mound the soil up a little bit behind that too. We have, and I'm, I'm going to look at Craig on this because he's been through this with me from day one. Is that I believe where that catch basin is along that side, we have a guardrail, and then landscaping. So the 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 landscaping doesn't come right up to the pavement. There's a there's a guardrail section because this is a pretty steep slope. So you're gonna flat flat with the. Uh, there's the sign. There's a uh, there you go. Right yeah, right, right. Single pole it, now. The issue with mounding behind the yeah, guardrail. So you, you have your you have your street here, your your berm, and then is it going to be flat landscaping? Or are you going to have a little bit of a oh, mound there yeah. in addition? Yeah. Yeah. It's level for a certain distance, and then they start with then their their down. slope to catch grade. Okay. See that, where that catch basin is? Right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking in terms of an additional height and barrier to keep for it from unexpected going. storms, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, perfectly logical uh, landscaping. Yeah, and I, I think you know, we got it covered. You understand what I'm saying, yeah. right? Okay. <clears throat> um. I, I would say for the linear feet, it's a, it looks like it's about 1,000 to 1,200 linear feet. Of total, um, total Cape Cod berm. Any uh, comments from the public? Oh, I didn't oh, Peter, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, question I have, first of all, I didn't have drawing 105 here. It was in the package. Yeah, uh, we. Because I was the one that asked about the snow. Right. Right, right. So that would not have been in the original in the application we submitted a month and a half that was ago. In the original That's in the original permit. package. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Peter, the plans I'm showing you are the original. What the approved drawings? I, I copied out of the thing because I knew that we were going to discuss catch basins, drainage, and engineering. Okay. So, with that, uh, the concern was about saving money going with the berm, as opposed to either granite or concrete, and my question is, 
If you're trying to save money, you spend a lot of money going up 100 feet with a sign. Oh, so, mm -hmm. to me, it's kind of like, you know, I understand you can shift money from one point to the other, but uh, on a project like this here, again, what's the cost of going from a berm to concrete? What would be the difference? You can address that, right? I, that's not there. You asked a question. That I, I, one of the things that I think members that have been on the board know, I'll tell you the truth. So part of this is that way, you know, part of this is right from the time that, and I'll look at the chair because I know he's in the business as well, from the time that we got this plan approved, um, we have changed engineering firms. Um, and one of the things that we had was on the quantity of curbs in the bid documents that our contractors out there doing, we missed, they missed about 375 feet, linear feet of curbing. So. One of those things is the change to granite to bituminous is about $76,000 is, is a savings. We're going to use $25,000 of that to pick up the three hundred and seventy-five dollars that was missed in the original bid. So. <laughs> it's one hand out of the other. I mean, that, that's, that, that's, the, that's the reality. Right. And we're not saving. I think, did you say you, you were saying we were saving money on the sign? So, no. What I'm saying is... Saving the money. comment that came out last meeting was you were trying to save some money. Yep. And at that point, understandable. But at that time is when you were going from the original height of the sign oh, yeah. going up to 100. Right. And I understand it's, there's a reason for that. Right. And, and it, this is the two things that are in front of this board. I guarantee you out of this $30 million project, I'm looking at numbers of chairs and <laughs> desks and everything else. It's not just, these are just the two <clears throat> items that's in front of you. Right, and, and I get that, I understand mm -hmm. that. Um, one other thing is on drawing 106, which talks about the striping and signage plan. This came out with another meeting, the welcome to Stoughton sign. Are you putting in the Stoughton? That's part of our, that was part of the original conditions of our, our, our conditions of our original permit. Right, and one of the issues that came up about the welcome to Stoughton sign, okay. it was put into another location, but it's set down so far that all the foliage grew up around the sign, so it, they changed that. You know, and I don't see what, this here doesn't show the height of the sign coming up out of the ground. I think we got a detail. We have, we have a standard, think we this, a this is about the fourth project. That right, Barry, what's happening, I, is, Barry? We, we understand that. The no. issue is that all the other projects, three or four of them in town, and they're all either too low or they're not being well lit. So people are making comments to us okay. that what we're presenting and what's being done we with can, those signs so is So what would you can, like to see? We, so what I, I mean, we, we may want to have a separate meeting with how that sign's going to get built or landscaped at some point in we'll time. Work with, we'll work with the Because it's just not working. We can, we can submit a revised drawing of the, of the proposed sign. Let, let, the, board, so let the board take a look at it. You know what a real nice, if you've seen them, the signs of the town of Easton. Has Just put get up. an electrical line out there, please. Sorry? Electrical line? Get a one-inch conduit out there. But solar. When we don't want the we don't want the welcome to Stoughton sign to be up hundred feet either. That's all right. Okay. We've got it right about here. Right, but how far off the ground? It starts to slope right there. So. No, but no, we'll, we'll, we'll address that. We need to come up with a detail of how high it's going to be and how it's going to be located. That's right. really what's coming because up. Because that's because right now, if you look at the other three or four that's around town, they haven't been well thought out as far as elevation and lighting. Of, so that's what we we can yeah. we can work we can work through Bill okay. and, yeah. and submit a proposed drawing. Yeah. That would be good. You, you can create the poster sign, and then all you can. <laughs> Anybody else you in the public the architect of it. Anybody else in the public Dan, want to speak? Dan, you're talking about the same sign that, for instance, we did as part of Panera and yep, Panera uh, season, down Seasons Corner season. Market, yep. Cumbies. Right, all okay. the same. Yep, we'll work with Those you. Those are all your projects. Does, right? anybody yep. from the, <laughs> does anybody from the town want to speak? If not, um, what's the will of the board? I'll make a motion to approve. Close the public hearing. All, so, sorry about that. Motion to hearing, close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And now a motion to approve the minor modification on the curbing. Subject to, subject giving the, to, decision. Subject to the decision. Subject to the decision. 
I have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That Thank vote? you all. Is that vote? You're opposed? I'm opposed. All right, so it's four to one. Four to one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the Thank board. You, board. Thank, Thank you, you, Craig and Bill. For, Please uh, your make arrangements. Come out and see us. We'd, we'd love to give you a tour of the building, the site as we're progressing. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. Welcome. Item number four. Continued public hearing will be held to petition the applicant file the bills in Main Spring, 460 Belmont Street, Brockton, Mass., 02301, represented by DeSalle, Burke, and Sala Associates, Inc., 1266 Furniture Park Parkway, Suite 401, Quincy. The site plan review went to Section 10.1, uh, sorry, 10.7, to convert the existing motel manager's building and existing single family residence into 24 efficiency unit apartment complex. The applicant is requesting a waiver of Section 4.1.2. Table of dimensional and density regulations to allow the existing four foot side yard setback to remain. Section 6.1.6, .6, table of off street parking, and section 6.1.7.19 to reduce the required parking from 24 spaces to 13 spaces and to allow two way drive aisle to be reduced from 24 feet to 20 feet. The project is located at 1919 Washington Street. Assessors map 60. Lot 15 in General Business Zoning District. Can the applicant and or their representatives please present? Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Board, Mr. Clerk, uh, Attorney John McCluskey representing Father Bills in Mainspring uh, regarding the project at the Stoughton Motel, which we were before you last month. And um, uh, we made our presentation relevant to what this project is all about. And in a quick recap, um, this is the old Stoughton Motel consisting of a couple buildings and a significant amount of land. And uh, there were 16 residential uh, motel units uh, at the property. Father Bills bought the property, I believe, back in June of this year and um, proposed to convert it to a 24 unit, um, each single uh, residential unit, uh, studio apartment, if you will, uh, totally modernized to make, it, to make a complete renovation of the property to make it attractive from the street perspective. Um, there was a pool on the property that's been filled, uh, will be appropriately addressed uh, the, per a question from uh, the planner uh, last month as far as um, the drainage in the in the pool. Um, there was a question relative to parking. Uh, historically, Father Bills um, in these in these uh, uh, proposals, uh, the the residents use approximately 10% of the residents will have vehicles. So we're asking for a waiver of that. Um, we realized that uh, there were some comments from the public uh, asking for additional parking. We actually are going to show some additional parking tonight uh, with the hopes and thought that we don't actually have to build them as a, the initial uh, project, but perhaps will be reserved for additional parking if needed in the future. Of course, there'll be additional runoff and, and impervious uh, surface um, if we have to put in the additional parking, which we can show. Um, as, the, as the board knows, this is a uh, type of a use that is allowed by the Dover Amendment uh, and we can use by right uh, this property for residential purposes. It's been used for residential purposes over probably the past uh, 50 years. And uh, we're just changing the type of residential use to a more permanent um, use. and. Uh, educational purpose, which will be part of the, the component of the project. Uh, these are homeless people who will probably be from the Stoughton area and will be able to benefit from the on-site uh, educational uh, component, which will be an overnight person all the time. There'll be always somebody there, two, two three or four people during the day who will be uh, educating these uh, folks to 
uh, become part of the community again and to learn many things about or relearn many things about becoming uh, good citizens and, and, and being able to uh, effectively function in the community. So under the Dover Amendment, um, I don't want to stress that too much, but that's what this is all about. Um, and this is a site plan approval, so we're ready to address the questions of site plan approval tonight. Um, and we really are not prepared or willing to go beyond the site plan approval issues. Um, and um, we would ask that you respectfully uh, recognize that. And with that, I would turn it over to our experts. Hello, members of the board. My name is Cameron Campbell. I'm with uh, Desel Berksala, the civil, civil engineers for the site. And there's really only one major revision to the plan that you saw last, and it's we are still asking for the waiver for 13 parking spaces instead of the required 24, with a condition that if this is approved and parking becomes an issue on site, that there is a designated area that can't be built on and that it, the board requires the owner of the property to add additional parking in that location. And I can show you a conceptual plan we did that brings the parking up to 25 spaces, which is 24 units and then one staff member. It's an additional 12 spaces in the rear. And the drainage on site. Cameron, what sheet is that on here? Uh, the sheet nine, the last one. And with, when we know with the additional impervious area, it would create more runoff. And the drainage on site has been designed as if this were to be built, even though we are hoping it's not, or if it ever has to be. It can handle that additional runoff in the long term. The other, another revision is we were originally proposing Cape Cod Berm on the entire site. Uh, there was a technical review done by Mr. Horsfall and Mr. Roth, and they requested that we change the curbing at the front of the site to granite, where the majority of the traffic takes place. So we are proposing granite curbing a lot up to the building, and then Cape Cod Berm at the rear. Okay. And that's all I have for. Oh, and yeah, the, there was a common, uh, your typical standard fence is white vinyl. We were proposing a six foot cedar and we're now proposing a white, six foot white vinyl fence. That was really the only thing I had to add, so I don't now have much new to tell you. Uh, my name is Katie Faulkner. I am the architect of record. My firm, Westwork, has been working on the design of the renovation of the motel. Um, most of the comments, if not all of the comments from our last meeting, really pertained to the site, the parking, and then the PDC fence. All of those things have been put on the site plan. Uh, there was a slight comment about changing the door color, and we're just showing those as blue. But of course, um, there are lots of options to review that. I think from the architectural standpoint, really what we're after is to, to upgrade the appearance. Uh, what's very important is the landscape and the appearance from the street. And then as well, um, we want to reduce the energy consumption, so we're bringing it up to the current energy code. But as far as the, the progress of the design since our last, it, it's relatively unchanged. Thank you. Any comments from staff? No. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we just received the plans on Thursday. Uh, Thursday, yeah. Um, so and we Monday was a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> so we haven't had a chance to uh, dive into the, the new calculations, um, but I have looked at the layout. Um, it looks to be reasonable for a reserved parking area that could be added on uh, at a later point in time, should the board uh, entertain that notion. Um, respectfully, we have not 
I can't think of any project in town that we've actually put reserve parking spots for, except for one commercial project, which is a very large commercial project, which would be able to handle overflow into their additional parking that's on site. Parking is usually a big issue in this town, and respectfully, with the type of way you, you presented, you have people that are living here. We have standards for how people need to be able to have parking in order that they have vehicles. I can't control who you have there in the future or not, but if it is the, the fact that you say only 10% of your clients will end up having vehicles, the answer to the site plan and the review of the overall proce um, process of how your project works, how do these people get transported around town? If they're independently living, how do they get to the grocery store? How do they get to the bank? How do they get to any of these places? We don't have public transportation down that end of the site. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, that question goes beyond the site plan approval process. It does not. We have oh, yes, it does. Um, excuse and, me. And, and let me suggest to you that if you exceed the site plan approval process, there are consequences to that. I understand, but, sir, if you look at what we've done in this town, the ins and outs of traffic for the, any project... It has nothing to do with traffic. It does. No, it doesn't. It certainly does. How many vehicles no, went in and out of a site? If you, if you look at your regulations... You, you can certainly discuss the traffic impact. We're telling you that, and you would, should fully understand, that even if there are 24 cars or 25 cars on this, this does not imp impact traffic. So you, you can't put the traffic impact issue on the table. Now, that being said, you've asked how people get around. People get around in many different ways. First of all, there is public transportation available to the site, on site. They can, they, first they could have their own vehicles, but only 10% of these people have vehicles. They can walk, they can have family members, and if they're Stoughton residents, which many of them will be, they can get family members to, to, uh, to, to take that on. It's not your purview to ask how people are going to get around town. No, but you're asking us for reduction in parking. That, no, you aren't, you're, you're we'll give you, okay. we'll give you the parking. Sir, I'm not looking to get, I'm not looking to get in a fight with you. You're asking for a question, I'm asking for the same question back. John, go ahead. John Yaswinski, CEO and President of Father Bill's Main Spring. We, if the board would l want us to provide the 25 parking spots, we have no problem doing that and agreeing to that tonight right. and making that change. That's absolutely fine. We are uh, completely comfortable with that. You want the parking? We'll give it to you. You don't need it. It's going to be extra surface, impervious surface. And, it, and, you know, you drive by a roadway in Brockton, place is empty, no cars. You drive by this place, and there's no public transportation that goes by the roadway place in Brockton. People make, this is, they, this they is, make sir, do. This, sir, this is Stoughton. I'm not looking to be compared to other I don't care where we are. If we, it's the same concept. We'll give you the parking if you want it. Any, any other comments on the board on any of the items we've got? I think we should uh, go with the parking because that's what's, you know, built in in Stoughton and we require the, the parking, so they're willing to do it, so we should go with it. Anybody else have any comments? No. Oh, Craig, I've got a question on the um, the width of the roadway. Do you have any issues with that, that drive aisle being reduced? Uh, yeah, so uh, they've reduced it down to a 20-foot width um, just because it's pinched between the building and um, there's a utility pole, I think, on the opposite side of, of the drive aisle. Um, I think it's still passable. Um, as long as the level of traffic volume is low. Okay. Is there any members of the public that would like to comment on this? Yes, ma'am. Come on up here, please. Mr. Chairman, I would ask that with any witnesses, they provide their name and address. That is required. They provide their name and address, and so that also everybody understands there was no more than five minutes of comments, and you only get to comment one time after you've, sat, after you've made your five minutes of comments, then you must sit down. You cannot re-comment again. That's fine. I just have two points. My name is Pia Smoot. I live at 1909 Washington Street. 
So I live literally like right next door. We kind of share space. So I have two concerns. One is I just wanted to know what you guys plan on doing with that house that sits in the back on the property. And two, um, I don't know if you guys knew, but there are people sleeping in the parking lot in their vehicles. So um, first it was just one vehicle and then a second one came. So I just want to know, like, what do you guys, how are you guys going to prevent that from happening while you guys start your project or construction or whatever you guys are going to do? Thank you. Uh, yeah, we, we just uh, learned from that just a couple, a couple, two days ago. We saw that there was a, some cars there. Um, so we are... Um, outreaching to those people to say you need to move on. We already talked to the two, one or two people that were somewhat, I guess, parking in the front uh, and sleeping there overnight. They've agreed to move. At the same time, we're, we, we're going to reach out to the town to see about what kind of barrier temporarily would, would be good to make sure that people know, um, you know that we, that we allow it, that a fire has to come in or something. So we're, we're open to those conversations and securing it. Our facilities team uh, checks on it weekly. Um, so we'll continue to be diligent, and I think even we connected, I think, with you guys. Um, yeah, talk to John. So, you know. Yeah, so we, we reached out to them, talked to them, and they said, sorry, we'll, we'll move on. So, yeah. the, the house in the back. Oh, I'm sorry. The house in the back will also be renovated, and that will also be turned into apartments. Mr. Semenya. No, no, it's okay. You'll have, the house in the back will have five units, yeah. and the motel and the manager's building connected to the motel will have 19 total. Yeah. Mr. Zermini. Uh, Mark Zermanian, um, 5 Low Avenue for the record. Uh, I just want to express uh, a previous speaker inferred that homeless people aren't good people because that person said, we're going to teach them how to be good citizens again. Uh, being homeless doesn't make you a bad person. And I have a lot of respect for the work that Mainspring and Father Bills does. And I, don't, I really don't like that comment. I think I retract it. It's a lousy comment. It infers that homeless people are bad people. Well, they're not. They're homeless. They're down on their luck. So thank you for hearing me, Mr. Chair. Welcome. Anybody else like okay. to speak? Yes, ma'am. Come on up, please. Thank you. My name is Miriam. I live right in front of the motel, 1912 Washington Street. So as somebody who has kids who's, who are growing, so I was just wondering, when you guys finish building that place, are you going to have like the back of the building for the rest of for the people to stay and smoke and the rest without being in the front of the building right in front of my house and then they smoke there? So that is my question. Thank you. Behind the building, there was an existing pool that's being turned into a patio courtyard area. There's already, addition, there's already walkways back there, so they can hang out at the rear of the building. There's really nowhere in front of the building to hang out. Yes, sir. Juan Fox, 624 Pleasant Street. <clears throat> the town has requirements that all apartments have at least one apartment, number one parking space for per apartment, at least, okay? And this is being touted as apartments, albeit studio apartments, but apartments just as well, okay? If that's the case, then it should be treated as such as an apartment. And every place, there should be a parking space for all the people and a parking space for the people who work there. Now they're saying it's supposed to be 25, one in a 24, and one. But really they said it's also two or three people working in a day, so it really should be 27, okay, based on what they said. Now that aside, I have a, you know, my concern is uh, about the business plan of this. 
we're talking about people, and by their own statement, uh, 90%. So that's like 21 people who they're trying to get into uh, uh, the working world, trying to get out and, and work for themselves. So eventually, these people are going to have to go to, a, uh, go to a job. How do they plan to do that? There's no, park, there's no uh, bus stop there. How do they plan to transport these people to and from 21 people, possibly, to and from work, eventually, to and from doctor's appointments, to and from the grocery store. How, how do they plan, plan to do that? And then they have just, what, two people? One of those people working there is better be a, a, a bus driver who's permanently driving people back and forth on the bus. Because it start, if they don't have that, then how can the, uh, the abutters feel that this is some place to, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to warehouse indigent people? You know, and permanently leave them there. Because even what they say, if they don't have some kind of way to get these people in and out of here when they feel like leaving or not, it isn't going to work. So I, I suggest that they make that a little bit more clear. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Joe Terry. I live right across the street from the motel. Uh, my issue is um, they have a pumping station in my backyard, not they, this, the town. Now I got to deal with the pumping station, which I have already deal with. Now I got to, out of my front part of my house, I got to look at this, this uh, homeless place. Uh, why can't they continue and let this stay as a as a hotel instead of? I mean, that's my question. Uh, to me, I don't like it. Um, if you put a gold fence around this. It's still going to be a homeless place. I don't care how you decorate it. It's still a homeless place. So that's going to make my property go down. And they're saying that uh, it's 24 apartments. They're going to bring 24 people in, train them, education, boom, boom, boom. Then you're going to go through the same rotation all over again. Uh, I, I can't go along with it. It, it may happen, but I still don't like it. Thank you very much. I, I can just say quickly, just as I said last time, um, yeah, this is permanent supportive housing. This is a, a home for everybody. For Father Bills in Main Spring, we have over 700 plus permanent housing units across Southern Mass. And 93% um, of our tenants uh, stay housed more than three years, 98% stay housed one year. So it's permanent housing and they'll have lease. So you'll have a more stable people um, that that will be there and they'll have the supports. So just to answer a little bit about um, the difference of uh, the motel that was there and what we're, what we're trying to do here with permanent housing. Actually, I have two questions. Uh, oh, is there someone from the public want to speak? I'm sorry. You drove, I didn't realize anybody else was back there. Yeah. Come on up, please. I'm Joe. How's it going? My name is William Keefe, uh, 1961 Washington Street, right up the street from the property. Um, one of my biggest concerns, and I know he didn't want to get into it, but it is traveling. So. 10% of 24 people, 2.4 people, you still have 20 plus people that have to get around. Friends driving them, you know, this Uber, all that fun stuff now. Undoubtedly, people are gonna try and walk to Roach Brothers. And as it is now, it's not really accessible if you look at it. If you, if you were to leave there and you wanted to walk to Roach Brothers, you're, you're putting risk. 
for these people. It's, it's a bad situation. Now I maintain the front of my property. I mow it, I keep the grass short, you know, make sure I pick up the trash every time I mow it and stuff like that. It's presentable. You know, my neighbors is too. But as you go and you just take a stroll, walk it. Try not to get hit by a car, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a bad scene to have people walking up and down 138 in that area. And I wouldn't suggest anybody do it. Thank you. Yes, Mr. McCuskey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Joe McCriskey, 78 Winter Street, member of the Select Board. How are you? Welcome to Stoughton. Um, I do have a question uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, the VP. Awesome save. And um, we do have some homes in Stoughton for challenged people. And I think what you're, you're doing here for these people is a good thing. I'm glad that you offered up the parking. I think it's the right thing that we stick with the parking because they're going to have visitors. They're going to have family coming and going as well. My question is any impact on public safety? Increased calls by the police department, fire department, so forth. Uh, some people do things in homes like this that are not what you plan for. Uh, we have some properties in town that have been well advertised in the past uh, that takes a bigger toll on police calls. So I don't know, I would like to be able to read something on some of your other properties that you could get to us and uh, on basically on impacts of public safety. How many ambulance runs go to your properties more than others? You know, things like that. You know, and I do know, I mean, we're gonna have people. Sidewalks was an issue as well. You know, that we don't have a sidewalk. If I lived there, I'd be going with Roach Brothers. It's the only place that I can walk to to go get my whatever, my food. I don't think you're providing these are apartments. So it, it is going to be tough to walk up there. But we know there's Uber, there's taxi cabs, there's vans. Maybe they're in a work program. The van's going to come pick them up. You'll have a 15 passenger van backing out in the street or whatever. You know, but uh, I was more concerned on the impacts on public safety. Okay, and uh, I'd be more than glad to give you my card. Uh, and uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the time. Thank you. Um, yeah, on, on public safety, you know, and we've opened it up to everybody, you know, from the community to the select board to uh, board members here. If people would like to come see some existing housing properties, we welcome that. You know, we've done that with many other communities, and we can also give you um, other community leaders, uh, you know, that have, we did a project in Randolph. We've done a project in Wareham. We've done a project, we have multiple projects in Hingham, in Weymouth, in Quincy, in Brockton. Uh, we are in Stoughton, the Evelyn House, the family shelter here. We've been here for a long time. We have other projects in Stoughton, actually, that maybe we don't own, but our people are there too. So um, we also have many properties in these communities like Plymouth and Wareham and Weymouth that don't have public transportation. And, the, and, the, and we all work together. Uh, people get concerned, like many of our properties, um, that's why we have the services there. We coordinate with people to get to their appointments, and we work together um, with them to map that out. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I hope that we're being treated as fair as if any person was moving into this community and moving into their house. Are we questioning how they're getting around? Right. So just to be, we just want to have equal that the people that we serve, many of the people that will be um, go into this type of housing will be disabled will have a disability, um, so providing a fixed income, affordable housing. Many of the people that go into our properties are elderly people. Uh, so, you know, when you think of public safety, that's why we have the services there 24-7 also. It's not a shelter, it's permanent housing. It's things that happen um, in single family homes every day also that, that require that. So we're just looking at it as, but we can supply some numbers and, and some references, and, we all, and we'd be open to giving people tours to see the properties that we have. Thank you. You had mentioned Evelyn House, and you recall we had a very bad situation with Evelyn House a while back. Okay, we want to make sure we prevent those things from happening again. Okay. Since like 2002. Anybody else from the public? Go ahead. 
Uh, a couple of questions, comments that I had was uh, in the previous meeting, uh, you talked about teaching and training. We asked for some type of a syllabus of what type of teaching and training would go on at the site. Uh, I know our attorney mentioned it before that we, when we went to the building inspector, when we went to the town for zoning, the use, like those yeah, things were accepted. So at this point, we're going to continue to focus on the, what we think is the purview of the planning board on that. Right, but you brought it up, the purpose of this building. One of the functions is for teaching and training. And we asked for something to, to get information on that, so we'd be enlightened. So, um, as you know, this is a, uh, an exempt use, and we're here for site plan approval. And under the Dover Amendment, we're an allowed use. We're a 501c3 nonprofit educational facility and exempt from the use regulations. You're asking about a use regulation, basically. You're getting into things that are exempt from zoning. We're not, gonna, we're not prepared and we're not going to go forward to discuss teaching and training. You've opened everything up tonight to use issues. They're off the table. Period. They're off the table. This is, an, this is a 501c3 exempt organization. The use of this, they own the property. They're going to operate this facility at this location. They are, we're not prepared to go forward on issues of traffic because we don't create any traffic. There's no cars really that come onto the property. You're not entitled to ask us about what happens at the facility, educational perspective. Wait, We're just not going to go there. I'm hearing a lot of this stuff about not entitled and not entitled. I want to hold off this meeting until we have a chance to refer to our attorney. I'm just I'm done with this meeting. I would, I would strongly I recommend that you go to executive point. session Could we, with um, your counsel. Um, continue this meeting to the next. Continue this meeting? Yes, please. Continue to. Um, the date in November, whatever that date was that we have in November? You can do it on the 26th or you could do it on November 9th? 9th. November 9th. 26th. No, 26th is this month, November uh, uh, 9th. 9th. But it continues to the November 9th meeting. Um, I have a motion to that effect. We would wel welcome that recommendation because we know where that's going. Could I have a motion to that effect? Make a motion to continue this meeting until November 9th. I have a second on it? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Just for the record, Mr. Chair, yes. I think that I kind of resent the hostility that's coming. And we want to work with, with you, but we don't need to be threatened. We don't, don't feel comfortable. I'm sorry. That meeting's been closed. The meeting's been closed, sir. Uh, Moving on. General, Mr. Murphy, I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you what the law is. New public hearing will be held at the petition of applicant IV3 Stoughton Logistics Park, Kara Tyler Mortis, Brookfield Properties, One Metal Place Plaza, Suite 301, East Rutherford, New Jersey, and the owners T.L. Edwards, Inc. of 100 Wales Avenue, Avon, Mass., and J.F. White Contracting Company of 56 Old Page Street, Stoughton, Mass., represented by Langan Engineering and Environmental Services, Inc. Please take it outside. Cambridge Street Suite 1310, Boston, Mass., with definitive subdivision approval under MGL Chapter 41, Section 81K, GG, and Stoughton Land Subdivision Regulations, February 17, 1999. The proposal is to create a wider way and a new road to provide access to the abutting properties. Waivers to Section 4, Procedures for Submission and Approvals, and Section 6, Design and Construction Standards and Required Improvements have been requested. The properties are located at 56 Old Page Street, Assessor's Map 93, Lot 87 and 156 Page Street, Assessor's Map 94, Lot 50 in the Industrial A Zoning District. Can the representatives please come up? 
Good evening, Mr. Chairman. R.J. Lyman uh, from Dane Torpy, a law firm's counsel to Brookfield Properties, the parent of the entity that owns this. I'm joined with by Hillary Holmes from Langen Engineering, Civil Engineers of the Project, and Tyler Mortis, who is somewhere back there, who is from Brookfield. Um, I believe this is our eighth time in front of you, and it's good to see you again. I thought we were all done. We are with the project, but we have a little bit of housekeeping, some line drawing on a map. Okay. Let's go. So, um, Hillary, I think, can walk us through uh, the uh, couple of slides we have. The short version is when you approved this project uh, over uh, actually on the Turnpike side, uh, it had always been contemplated through the site plan review that this roadway would occur. Um, it occurs at present on an easement that has long been held by Terry Edwards, the predecessor to our client in owning the big assemblage. Uh, but it makes sense for it to become a, a subdivision road that provides a legal frontage, uh, amongst other things, to not only to Brookfield but to the other property owners. Hillary can walk you through the details and then we'll be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, the intent, the intent would be for this to remain as a private road as well. Um, but as we, you can see on the plan, we have it shaded in the purple is where the proposed road is. So we have Page Street on the right, and you have the Stoughton Logistics Park Warehouse um, site on the left. You have Lot 1, which is the larger um, lot that's outlined in purple, is the JF White um, Contracting Company lot. And so that's the piece that has the 60-foot um, easement that Mr. Lyman mentioned. And then over to the right, you have 162 Page Street, um, which the road will be coming through. So that's effectively you going to split it into two parcels. So you have parcel one on the north and parcel two on the bottom. So this is just basically to create the road. Yes. Yeah, to create the right of way, yeah, for the road. Yes. So will the road be part of each of the parcels, or is it going to become its own a parcel? It's going to be... It's, it, I mean, it's going to be its own private road, so you have to reconfigure the lots then. So lot one is reconfigured to take out that section of the road. Right, but and then, my question is, so it's going to become a subdivision road that, the, that you're going to ask the town for it to take over at some point in time, or what is the purpose to, what is the purpose it, to it, making it a subdivision it, it, road? It'll be a subdivision road which will be continued to be held privately. It's benefit to a... Oh, oh. Thank you. Um, it will uh, remain a, uh, it, it is a subdivision uh, way providing frontage for the site, but it would remain a private way uh, open to public travel for uh, Jeff White and the other property owners. We, Greg, are we at standards for a subdivision road with the way that road's being built? Yeah, so there were several waivers that had been requested as a part of um, their application. Uh, Basically, the construction of the road is exactly as shown in the site plan approval process. Which is uh, not a subdivision pool. Correct, yeah. There were a few um, waivers for vertical alignment, horizontal alignment, just by the way that this road needs to kind of do its little less turn um, to get into the property. Um, the, the vertical alignments, um, we have requirements for for uh, vertical curvature and so forth um, that they've requested some waivers for. So we've reviewed the design of that access road as a part of that site plan and we feel it's adequate to access the site. Although be it, it doesn't meet all of the requirements for the subdivision roadway. Um, we reviewed the plan uh, line work to uh, see if it met the intent. We had a few comments about um, some notation, the way that uh, you know some of the line work was shown, uh, really minor stuff. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, it's it's per what was shown on the site plan, um, and then uh, there's waivers for content um, from the subdivision regulations as well, because typically uh, you have you know roadway cross sections and all the construction details, which are on the site plans. Uh, but this set does refer back to them, so. So the information is there. We're not, we're, not, we're not superseding the information. Right, the connection yeah. is there, so we made sure that they were tied together. Yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's kind of an oddity. You, 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 you um, they're, they're really proposing and asking to establish a right-of-way, take that property away from the, you know, 
Um, they want it to be maintained private. Um, you know, we can write the decision. There's, there's numerous, I've seen several decisions that, you know, under no circumstances, you know, like the Ruggiero way, you know, uh, not to be accepted by the town of Stoughton. Um, in discussions with them, and, and Craig uh, highlighted it, um, the kind of the cart before the horse, the, uh, the driveway or the access road was approved through subdivision, or I mean, approved through site plan. Um, and so, you know, in order to, you know, meet the letter of the law for subdivision, they did, um, uh, Hillary listed a, an extremely exhaustive list that is based on the approved site plan road. So, um, so I guess my question is, are we, are we being asked to approve three form A lots along a road, or are we being asked to approve a road? I'm asking, really, what's the, what's the, what are we asking the board to do? Yeah, so you would have to approve the, the new lot configuration for JF White and for the splitting of the 162 yeah. Page Street, and you're being asked to approve the subdivision, right. proposed subdivision road. Yeah, so be you, private. you're yeah. approving the right of way, you're approving the reconfiguration of lot one, which is the Edwards property. Which loses, basically loses the distance of the road. Correct. And the uh, parcel one and two uh, could not be considered buildable lots because they're, they're only parcels because they don't, uh, they would not meet the area requirement. So they're considered non-buildable parcels. Uh, but they weren't going to be built on anyway through the, sub or through the uh, site plan review process. Um, which is under, so it's not four A's, it's, this is a subdivision. So, you know, you can, you can do that. If I might, Mr. Chairman, you, you may recall you <clears throat> understandably asked us relatively early in our last process with you why we weren't coming forward with the definitive subdivision then, and we are now. And you're right, this is a bit of an odd thing. There's one reason, and it's very simple, which is that Terry Edwards parcels, some of them were registered land, some of them were recorded land. So we had to petition the land court in order to remove them from registration in order to allow the lots to be uh, treated as a single lot for the purposes of uh, land title. And that was just became a longer lead time item than we had expected. That's the only reason why you're dealing with it separately. But in substance, there's no difference here than everything you've already seen and approved. Uh, and uh, as Craig pointed out, the stuff that isn't in here as a matter of form is incorporated by reference and is cons consistent 100% with what it is you previously approved. Um, that said, I will add one last notation, which is the applicant would have no problem if there were a condition that said this will never become a town roadway. That's no problem at all. It's not our intention. Any members of the board have any questions? Yeah, so this is going to be private. So the maintenance, the snow plowing, anything to do with the road is on. It's on us. And again, properties. It's on us. We're in for it. You can write it down, black and white. We'll follow it. No problem. <laughs> okay. And we'll, uh, based on a previous application uh, removed, we'll make sure we n n note who, who, what land owners are responsible in the decision. We, we, we learn from our mistakes from uh, 1984. <laughs> There's a book written about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I made mistakes in 1984 as well, so yeah. it's no problem. <laughs> He hasn't made mistakes since then, though, he'll tell you that. <laughs> I haven't made the same mistakes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Richard, anything? Paul? Yeah. Yeah. So who actually owns parcel one and parcel two? Uh, those are right now a single parcel owned by an entity controlled by Terry Edwards and will be owned by Brookfield Properties. So you will take ownership of those two properties? That's correct. And you will not be able to build on either? That's correct. As a matter of law, we will not be able to. And what do you plan on doing with those pieces of property? We bought, we bought them for the sole purpose. We had no original intention of buying them. We bought them for the sole purpose of being able to make this connection because it was uh, starting with uh, Mr. McCrinsky and your then town manager was made very clear to us that if we put the trucks uh, on Turnpike Street, we weren't going to have a project. So we needed to come out the back way, so we bought the extra land. The, uh, we got lucky at some level because the 50-foot right-of-way that goes along the southern edge of the J.F. White property had long existed. Simeone's put it in place many years ago. Uh, and so we had that, and then the intermediate bit is already in a public way, so that it reverts to us when it's discontinued. So that's how we uh, caused ourselves, uh, came to buy that. 
just to accomplish this, no other reason. So are you going to turn that into green space and maintain it as I believe that is included in the green space. Okay. That is what well, we wetlands are on it currently. <laughs> That's wetlands and yeah. that okay, but I, what happens is uh, Page Street, for the most part, if you look at it, um, trash builds up on that and everything else. So, I mean, if you own this property, you're actually responsible to make sure that it's kept clean and neat and everything else, correct? Yeah. Okay. Any members of the public would like to speak about this? Yes, sir. Juan Fox, 64 Pleasant Street. Uh, three questions. I'm assuming this is a, a new entrance uh, to the property, a third entrance to the property? No, this is the existing entrance we approved originally. It's not a new entrance. This is the this existing ex we, entrance off of Page Street. This was the entrance and exit for all the trucks that we approved as part of the entire project. Okay, so there's not going to be any difference in the traffic no. going in off the off the uh, land. This is exactly the same road. All this has got to do with is how the ownership of the road is going to be dealt with and how the lot configurations are being done. Got planned. it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Would be the will of the board. We have a motion somewhere. Motion to close. Is this a public hearing? Yes. Close the yes. public hearing. And if you'd like, I can prepare a recommended decision for the 1026 meeting. I have a vote to close the public hearing. Aye. 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 Okay. Public hearing is closed. And and you would like me to prepare a, a record a, a, a recommend a decision of approval. Yes, please. Okay. So Most you can vote so. on that for at the 26th at the next at the 26th meeting, subject to approving the waivers that are requested based on the design of the site plan. So made. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I abstain from it. You abstain from it. Okay. We have four to one on that, four to an an abstention. Uh, who abstained? Peter. Okay. Uh, just make sure Karen knew that. All right, um, item number six, deliberations on the Stoughton Redevelopment Authority's Urban Renewal Plan. Votes may be taken. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I presented you with a, a recommendation. I know that uh, Mr. Zamania is here. He's the chairman of the Redevelopment Authority, and I believe uh, Jeff is... Uh, uh, um, uh, from, B, uh, from BSC group is here also. Um, the recommendation I have would be that the planning board finds that the Stoughton Center Urban Renewal Plan prepared for Stoughton Redevelopment Authority and prepared uh, by BSC uh, group is based on local survey and is consistent with phase one and two comprehensive master plan for the town of Stoughton as a whole in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 121B, Section 48. And, the, you know, I've written it specifically this way. Uh, I've looked at several uh, approvals and they all reference this this way uh, for uh, DHCD. This is their recommended uh, pr approval. Before we, we get to that, vote of that decision. Um, Mr. Zamini, I know you were online at the last meeting and there was people here. We did ask for, or I specifically asked for um, other towns and places that towns that we have that have done this type of thing and where yes. we are with this. Because it's considered an urban renewal. We're not urban and I'm trying to figure out where we are with this and how that's going to affect the town of Stoughton going forward. Right. My understanding is uh, Mr. Fasser was going to access that information. Jeff? Yes, and I did look at the state's, first of all, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I did look at the state's website of um, plans, urban renewal plans that have been approved across the state. Uh, as I mentioned in our last meeting, there were a few that are considered cities, are call, actually are cities, but have a population smaller than Stoughton. Uh, but as when it comes to uh, towns that have urban renewal plans, the two I noticed, one is in Medway, and it's not in the downtown area. It's remote. It's outside of downtown, a bunch of undeveloped land that had very small parcels that were being consolidated. 
So it really isn't apples to apples. Um, the other one was Carver, which was a, again, outside of downtown, and it was a uh, kind of an industrial park subdivision that was created. So I, unfortunately, I didn't find any that were apples to apples with Stoughton, except for some of the small cities that I mentioned last time, such as uh, Gardner. So how, I guess, it comes back to my question of the last meeting, is how does this end up working in a town that we have, and how does this get put together? Because I want to put something in place. We've, we've changed the zoning in that area, and now we want to add a, a, another layer to that that also comes outside of the zoning that we have. And it seems like we're trying to run through a lot of hurdles. I'm not sure what we're going to get to when everything seems to have to come back to town meeting. So why are we doing this, and what is it gaining us? And how, and how does it work with the town? Sure. Um, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to uh, sort of refresh everybody's memory. We did this originally in the Technology Drive area. Um, so this would be the second uh, attempt at an urban renewal. Uh, that was a unique area in the sense that, you know, it had no real development on it. The interest of the town was to develop that area, and that has turned out to be the highest tax grossing area in Stoughton proper. Um, so it was successful. Uh, this will be successful. Um, so the Redevelopment Authority in 2016, as you know, recognized the need uh, to improve upon the downtown center. We needed to do something to jumpstart it. Um, that process passed through the planning board at the time, but not the select board. Um, this was picked back up in very early 2020 by the Redevelopment Authority and pushed forward. So this is our if you will, second attempt at it. Um, the way the current redevelopment authority looks at this, this area, and remember we, we've been at this three plus years, partly because the zoning was happening. And it was a, we don't want to put the cart before the horse. Um, so we were very patient and I worked with you, Dan, and, and some of the other members. I was honored to be able to input or give our input from the redevelopment authority's perspective on how the zoning could best work for the downtown center. Uh, this is going to work in collaboration with our town management, town staff, and select board, and of course this board. It's the only way it works. Um, if we do this, as you've heard, it's giving us the authority to be able to take different parcels, put them together so that it's attractive for a developer pave the way, so to speak, when it comes to the zoning, ensuring that when a developer comes in, he's not trying to piece things together. It also gives us the ability to provide infrastructure in areas where it doesn't exist. Um, it allows us to become the negotiating arm for the town so that um, just use the, the two special town meeting articles that I'm hearing are going to be dismissed. Um, one was for an eminent domain taking at the old Malcolm Parsons property, the other one, the State Theater. If the town is interested and willing to do these projects, the authority can be the arm for the town to do those things. Um, we don't have the finances to start large-scale purchasing, but we do have the capacity, and if we had an urban renewal plan, then we would have the capacity to get grant funding, uh, talk directly with those developers, on behalf of the town. So it is a, a situation where we all have to work together, no question. Um, it's not going to be, here you go, SRA, go have fun. It's just simply not going to work that way. We don't have the staffing. We don't have the financial strength to do something like that. So we want to work and have had discussions with Mr. Coulter, our town manager, uh, many of the select board members, and of course, uh, Bill Roth, who recently joined this process. This is a longer process for us than, than Bill has been with us. Bill's been incredibly helpful to us, um, as have all of you in your comments. And I've made myself very open right up to this point. Um, we are going to be, this will be discussed at our uh, next redevelopment authority meeting, but our intent is to expand the subcommittee that we have to include the planning board. I need to hear your input. It's important to us. If I could also add an uh, answer to your question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. Um, 
The an urban renewal plan gives a community, in this case, a redevelopment authority, yet another tool to help with redevelopment and activities downtown. So one, as you know, it was a recommendation of the master plan that an urban renewal plan be uh, developed for downtown. And what an urban renewal plan does that a town normally wouldn't have the ability to do is to acquire properties for the purpose of economic development. Right now, a community can take property or purchase property for a public purpose, such as a roadway, a park, a school, a public facility, but it cannot purchase property for the purpose of economic development. An urban renewal plan gives a community to do that, uh, the ability to do that. So that is a no tool that the town will now have to help move along parcels that have been identified as key parcels in the downtown area for redevelopment and um, allow the redevelopment authority to do some direct negotiations with property owners for acquisition, as well as for selling of that property, which is called disposition, um, provided that the developer, proposed developer is you know, doing something consistent with the urban renewal plan, which is in front of you, which again builds off the master plan and a lot of the recommendations from that also. So I understand your question about what, what else does this do for the community? Um, and that's one of the reasons why the plan is being done to allow the redevelopment authority to get involved with land acquisition and sales for the purpose of economic development, which otherwise the town would not be able to do. If, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If we approve this tonight, what, what's the next steps from this point? So, and I, Jeff may want to expand on this, but our next step will be to set a meeting with the select board. Um, that meeting will hear their concerns. Uh, they'll have an opportunity to take, care, take a look at the draft that you've been presented. Um, they may ask us to make changes, I don't know, but that'll be the next piece of the process. Uh, once that happens, uh, Jeff will continue the process with EOHCD. Did I get that right? Um, yeah, they have a new name. Yeah, now. they have a new name, uh, formerly known as DHCD, and that is a process that um, will include a MEPA filing, um, which we're required to do now. Um, and so in addition to what Mark just said, when the, the select board does have their meeting, it is required to be start as a public hearing, so they will hold yet another public hearing on this, which allows the public to come and comment on this. Um, and then as Mark said, it, assuming the planning board, I mean, the uh, select board approves this, it then goes to the state for their final approval. If the state approves this as an urban renewal plan, then we have to go through a MEPA process, which they have a public uh, input process also as part of that permitting process. So there are a number of opportunities for people in the public, um, residents of the community to provide comment on this. and. Before it goes to the uh, whatever the new acronym is for DHCD, um, there's an opportunity to make some edits. Um, if there are major edits, we would have to come back to the planning board, but we don't expect that. And then during the MEPA permitting process, if there are public comments, then the um, uh, state may require in their certificate of compliance that certain um, things be done before certain actions are implemented as part of the urban renewal plan. What's the time frame? Six to nine months. Anybody else on the board have any other questions? We're basically a small, just saying you're meeting the master plan, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yes. Correct. Yes, yeah. So you're going to get a certain amount of authority, responsibility with this approval? Yes. Right. What keeps you in check? Um, we don't have any money. <laughs> 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 no, um, in, in fairness, what we have agreed to um, as part of the discussions with the select board uh, is to work with the town manager. If we're going to be an arm of the town, and we're going to be using some of the resources um, of the town to effectively apply this, then that's what keeps us in check. We have to work with the town staff. We don't have our own staff to do this. 
Um, so from a financial standpoint and from a staffing standpoint, we need to work through the select board and, and more importantly, the town staff. Not more importantly, but equally importantly, the town staff. So for clarification, for example, you want to buy a parcel of land. Mm -hmm. But that would still have to go before town meeting for approval. No. Um, if we had the financing to do it or could get a grant, then we could do it on our own. If we were using town funding, then yes, it would have to go before town, town meeting. But CPC money, isn't that... That would have to go... That goes town. through town meeting. That's town meeting, okay. Absolutely. CPC is only a recommending board. It doesn't actually spend any money. They recommend to town meeting that money be spent. Uh, and... I can't think of, <laughs> there's almost n nothing in the urban renewal plan that would qualify for CPC except for the, the, An the, open, space the open space. That is it. What about yeah. housing for, uh, you know, senior housing or something of that nature? We could, um, through a private organization, unless the town was to create another housing authority property, mm. we could theoretically donate funds, if you will, uh, through the CPC to... Uh, for instance, we have two. We have uh, Mainspring, which you heard tonight, that is before the CPC in a full application on the 1st of November, and the Hebrew Senior Life Project. Um, both of those projects, when you break down the math, they have an equation. So it would, they're looking for approximately $10,000, a little bit more than, um, per unit from the town, and there's incredible benefit that we can get in return for that, upwards of $40 uh, per dollar that we give, the state will give as well. So, I, you know, I'm not truly familiar with all the math, but if you look at it and you compare those two <coughs> projects, they both come out to about 10 grand a unit that they're asking for. Right, um, so I mean... Yep. But again, if we from the Redevelopment Authority decided we wanted to do a housing project, we could only go and ask that the CPC recommend the funds. It's town meeting that would supply the funds. So there is some checks and balances. Absolutely. Okay. That's yes. all. Anybody from the public would like to speak? No. So the recommendation would be the wording that you've um, presented tonight, whether we take a vote on that to move forward. Do I hear a motion to that effect? A motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I get a motion on the wording that Bill has presented tonight. Yes? No? I make a motion that we... You can just read it. <laughs> <laughs> the recommendation that Bill has put forth tonight. I have a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be in touch. Thank you very much. We, we still have a great deal to do, um, but I want to thank this board for all their efforts. I know you've had a couple of renditions of this, so you probably have four or five pounds of paper at home. But I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Also, Mark, it should be said uh, thank you for your efforts and the gentleman. Jeff okay, Jeff, thank you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Bill, are we going to need to sign this document as it is, or how do we want to handle that? Um, we can make a motion to have the chairman sign it, right? Yes. This only says draft on, so I don't know whether you need to make an Yeah. Original. What you really should say that you essentially reference that the board finds that the, what I read, that that's your motion. That's the motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you want to, um, all I need to do is it, it'll show up in the minutes, and then I just write a letter um, to the redevelopment authority and to what used to be Jeff, what used to be DHCD, that the board held a public hearing on on the 12th of October, October uh, and they voted blah blah blah, and I and I can sign it. Okay. Yeah, and as long as the minutes are attached. And with the minutes yeah. attached. So. Obviously, we've got a little bit of time, so it would be once the minutes are attached, once the minutes are approved, then we'd like to get a copy of the minutes as part of that letter, yeah. uh, Bill. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we have uh, general business. We have meeting minutes from Thursday, September 14th, 2023. Um, and I did review them. I don't know. What yeah, and I, and I made a, I had the, um, 
this draft too, I made some just some technical credit uh, error uh, changes. Uh, one of my repeated it was uh, as on several of the votes it said Mr. Murphy no, and it's actually uh, I wanted to clarify. Uh, so it's actually Mr. Murphy abstained because the application started prior to his being appointed. I want it to be very clear, well, you know. Um, so I don't look negative. Correct. I, I want it, it just clarifies why you abstained. Uh, and, that, and I wrote that once and then I cut and pasted it in about six locations. And then uh, I did clarify some other things uh, on it. I didn't see the minutes. I didn't get a copy of it. They're in, they're in your packet. Yeah, they're in your packet. Yeah, they're the last sheet. Copy either? Uh, I have them. They were on. They were the. the they were the last copy. page. Yeah, I do. A, I have a copy. I just gave it to Peter. Separated by the blue sheet. There was the redevelopment authority. You have a copy there. there. I have one. Somebody, just hand it down to them. Yeah. Take a yeah. Look at. There you. You have mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're looking through mine, but you mm -hmm. have mine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, where the hell did I just put it? Take that copy, too. Did you email this to me? Uh, I they were emailed. Yeah, they were emails. All right, I'm sorry. I... Yeah, you're supposed to read the email and review it so that we're... Yeah, well, all we have to do is approve them. Okay, I'm good. No, that's my stuff. Here's the line. That's right. <laughs> Don't touch it. All set? Yeah. Motion, motion to, approve. to approve the meetings. Minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I have a motion to close the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everybody. Let him know, Peter, that we're done. <laughs>